is still very talented in my opinion. Uh, the positional play is what really makes Flamey interesting. And they were already live with the game. Not going to waste any time here. Cloud9 starting terrorist side on Inferno. It's going to be Navi on the CT side. So welcome ladies and gentlemen here. Grand finals of ESWC Montreal 2015. I hope you're going to enjoy the show. Sean already pushing up quad and look at this flanking around. It's the rest of the Cloud9 force coming in from Archway. But Navi replies, seized with a double kill and it's down to nothing in a 1v4 and they get shot down. Seized, triple kill, all headshots. I like that play from, Na from Cloud9 though. Pushing quad, very simple, and then flanking around Archway. That worked really well right up until the point it turned out that Na'Vi had an incredibly fast rotation and they were all there to help out. They had a four stack. Na'Vi right from the start had a four stack on that A site. It's pretty much worst case scenario for Cloud9. If it's a, it's, if it's a five on three, then Cloud9, maybe they get in there, they actually manage to, uh, to get a couple of picks and they get that bomb down. But the fact that Na'Vi had four players playing on that bomb site, establishing the crossfires, Cloud9 didn't stand a chance. Na'Vi are not a team that's going to let an opportunity like that go to pass. But now, well... Navi, again, aggression. This is what they're famous for. Straight up fight, sees, rushes down, and it's going to get a little expensive. Nothing, and Sean Gary's managed to bring it back to a two-on-three. But there was definitely a little bit more damage there that Navi account wanted to, uh, wanted to give. Wanted to take, rather. Uh, nothing actually going to get the kill on Edward, and Sean has the bomb if he runs for B right now. He can't know this, but if he does, then it's going to be very interesting all of a sudden. Edward, uh, sorry, Susan Guardian still have the health to fight this 2v2, but... This has turned into a very tricky round. And Sean, I think he spotted out one person there. So I think Seuss and Sean know where each, are, where each other are. They're just not quite sure where Nothing went off to. No, they really are, but good play here by Nothing. Wrapping back around to help his mate. And he's going to be able to take this fight with Guardian. He will get picked off, but he was low HP already. Problem is that Zeus is already rotating around. He's going to get that line on CT. And he's just going to hold down Mouse 1 here. No, he doesn't. Sean is actually going to be right on the edge. And not a perfect smoke there for Sean. Basically gives Zeus the angle that he needed to get that shot and deny the plant. So Cloud9 are going to be very frustrated about that. You want that bonus money. I mean, Ska is up to 3150, but just imagine if they have a bomb plan in that situation. Yeah, that was, I think, a bit of a silly slip up from Sean there. That, that could have definitely been a full smoke. He also, I think, had a Molotov and a flashbang. So I'm not saying he could have probably won that 1v2. That would still be difficult, but you, you never know. You know, one kill, uh, or at least the bomb plan there would have definitely helped out. Edward going down in the middle and actually quite aggressive here from Cloud9. As Freakazoid's going to pick up Flaming. They're trying to push behind again, Navi. And they're going to lose another two members, making this quite a good round for Cloud9. They're going to be just fine with this because now they're going to be able to buy. And if you look at the money on Navi, it is going to be a little bit lower than it otherwise would have been if they had come out of that last one with a perfect, uh, a perfect score. And Skadoodle currently waiting on what Sean Garris wants him to do, basically. And it will be the op. Okay, so he got up to it, 52-50. And so he will have enough for the AWP, Flash, and Smoke. And that's what's important here. He's going to get that angle, and they go jumping past. He's not going to hit the shot, Howard. Just a little bit too quick for him that time. And now Guardian has the edge. Guardian also going to fall back. Does not want to get punished from second mid. So these teams, I mean, these teams, they just have all the timings dialed in. But talking about that strong B defense, they're seized. Stops Freakazoid from being able to push up Banana, even doing a little bit of damage through that smoke. Yeah, if they end up pushing B, then one of the coolest things to watch about Seized is how he hides with oranges by the, by the box in, in the corner, and then he manages to push out just as people come in, so he just catches the timing on them as they're about to lock him into the corner. I don't know how he does it, but he's very, very good at getting that timing. Right now, though, now V, a lot of power early on in the three rounds. Here they've slowed it down a bit more, but they are still forcing Cloud9 to play in middle and not so much on Banana, and they've taken down two members early on, which has made this a very curious round here for the NA team. Hard to know where to go from here. They need to hope for a mistake, basically. But look at that Seize. He's dead on with his angle. Can't get spotted. Ska's going to open up and take out Guardian. So that could be an opening here on short. But then there's still a man up on balcony. Very common spot for Edward to play from. So they shouldn't be surprised. And Ska gets peeked out. No Kevlar there as well. So if Edward actually gets a tag, that could be the death of Ska. Skadoodle, rather. Right, Flamey will get a headshot on Sean. And Seuss will help out onto nothing. As Molotov is decent, but Skadoodle... 18 seconds. Not even sure he can easily run away from this. He's going to spot out Seuss and wants to make his escape and takes the fight from the balcony as well and drops Seuss. And now he's in the apartment and he should be able to run away if he keeps running here. Five seconds. Don't think they can easily catch him if he just goes to hide. They're going to so get him boxed in. If he just holds, if he doesn't peek. Oh, so close. He actually makes it out. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Guardian with five kills, Seize with eight, though, and each of them have only died the one time. And we're going to be moving into the fifth round here. Cloud9, still not very many bomb plants, which is an issue. I mean, 
at the very least, you, you want to try and get in and, and fight for some of the Alpha Plants, see if you can't get just a little bit more out of it. Right now, they're being locked out of the bomb sites entirely. Trying to push Top Banana, and they're going to run into the two members holding up there. That's Flamey and Seized, the Russian duo. Mm -hmm. And triple stack. I mean, Navi, they expected this kind of push to come out from Cloud9. They put three players here early. They're still keeping three players, and Shroud finds a random shot on Seized through that smoke. Headshot, and Seized is down. But there's still two players waiting, and Zeus right on the edge of the car. He's going to get caught out of the open, though. Overwhelmed. Sean Garris rushes him down, but there it is. Instant headshot from nothing, opening it up. Rotation is coming out from Guardian, but he's just going to be a little bit too late. They do manage to get that bomb pass and onto the bomb site, and this time the smoke is down, and it's good. There's no gap for Guardian to abuse. This is a ridiculous round from Na'Vi. They should have <laughs> never let go of Top Banana as easily as they did. Sure, the shot for the smoke, you can't really anticipate that, but the following two kills shouldn't have happened. So a big window here for Cloud9. Guardian scoped up. He's going to take down Skadoodle, though. It's still a 2v2, and a lot of time has passed here. Na'Vi are going to have to make a move, and they know it's Shroud to take down Edward, and Guardian wants to make his escape. He knows he can't make it. Going to try and see if he can run away, but maybe bait out a couple of exit kills as he does. Not going to get the shot on Shroud, and Bomb is obviously going to blow up here. Guardian trying to make his escape, and Shroud can't stop it, but in, in a way he will. Sacrificing himself for the course, and 4-1. to one. Going to be moving into the sixth round now. That, that works out just fine. That was a really big slip up for Na'Vi, and actually we should touch on this point. So Na'Vi are actually quite good at playing this map, but a lot of their effect they have on the terrorist side, on the CT side, they are actually one of the worst teams, I think, on, on like a top level at, at using their smokes correctly. They always end up using pretty much all their smokes before the 50 or 45 second mark. It's kind of weird. Being thorough, relying on the aim, essentially, and getting that pressure up on Cloud9. I mean, another thing is that Na'Vi, right from the start, went for a lot of aggression. Now Cloud9 have kind of taught them, if you go for aggression, we're going to get the punish. You can't just run over us like that. You have to respect us. And, you know, speaking of respect, there it is. Nothing takes out Flamey, the young gun for Na'Vi. And so a man advantage now for Cloud9, and they're on the edge of putting Navi on an eco here. This would be big for Cloud9. This would give them a lot of room to work with here at the beginning of the half. Really, really smart move from Seize here, pushing up. Not just picking up the rifle, but the smoke that Flamey had dropped. But if you look at the timer again here, Seize is about to put down this smoke, and there's still about 50 seconds left. And that's going to be the last smoke on B. They are sitting over, and Edward going to go down. He did take out Shroud, but it's still a 4v3, and Cloud9 with the man advantage. And let's see, Seuss has another smoke. That's actually a really, really... Good example of what Na'Vi normally don't do, but are doing really well in this round. They have a smoke in that B-bomb site, and there's 40 seconds left. Means if Cloud9 want to make their way through here, it's going to be about 20 seconds before that smoke disappears, and that'll get really, really ugly. So now they have a choice to make. Push with the smoke, or wait till it's gone and potentially run out of time entirely. And you can see them setting up right here. It's going to be the grenades on over, and they have the flashes and the Molotovs ready as well. And look at this. 20-some seconds, and this smoke is going to disappear. Cloud9, now they're ready. Seuss in the corner as well with the Famas. They're not checking it. He gets the first kill. Goes for another one. Triple kill from Seuss with the Famas. Taking out all of Cloud9. And Sean Gez, he has got to be wondering what just happened. And when the shot, I mean, basically, the gamble. Navi gambled again. So just like in the pistol round, they put four on A site. This time around, Seuss is like, nope. We're, if we stay on B and they run B, great, we're ahead. If they go A... Tough luck, we'll have to go for a retake or we'll just save our guns. So it's just the perfect place to, for Navi to be the way that it works out. And Zeus holding close like that as well. It all works out for, for Navi and they narrowly dodge an eco. It's going to be Cloud9 instead having to sit on the pistols. Sean Gares will have that AK to work with here in this round. A couple nades as well. But tough break for Cloud9. They really had a chance to break Navi there early on. Now it's just going to get more difficult. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. This is, this is going to put a little bit of, I think, uh, a twist on this whole first half. The way that was won as well, triple from, from Seuss. And honestly, if Na'Vi have adjusted their CT side so that they actually will use their smokes and Molotovs in a reasonable way, that'll make them a very scary Inferno team. They were already scary just because they were pretty good at picking up terror side rounds, but if they can combine it with some solid defense, that's going to be uh, interesting. Guardian there, taking down Freakazoid, and Sean has the only rifle, obviously, on the Cloud9 team. And they're kind of gathering up. They're looking to see if Sean can't find an angle here, but... Navi know that all they have to do is play passive at this point. They don't want to expose themselves to the pistols, to any kind of random Tech-9 headshot, and they also know that Sean has that AK. And they also know that Cloud9 are going to be counting on Sean to try and create an opening here. So what they're doing is they're basically making Cloud9 sweat, holding these passive spots until Cloud9 are committed to the site. And there you go. Flamey opens up, takes out Skadoodle, seized, holding the line, spots the first man pass. Great spray transfer. It takes out Sean, and that one-for-one -one trade is perfectly fine because you still have Flamey at the back of the site, and Zeus is rotated in from CT as well. So that will be Shroud coming in and very predictably getting caught out by Zeus. 
So four players alive at the end of the round for Na'Vi, and that's catastrophic for Cloud9 as well, because now Na'Vi can start to develop the bank. They can start getting some breathing room here. So again, life isn't getting any easier here for Cloud9. They need to strike right now. This is the round right here. Cloud9 need to put a stop to this, at least take one round off of Na'Vi. Yeah, if, if they win two consecutive rounds here and make it 6-3, then they probably get a free round because then Cloud9, oh, sorry, Na'Vi are going to be ecoing and we'll be looking at 6-4 and then it's a very different scenario. But if they continue to lose, then this could turn into a bit of a slaughter here on the first map. And the, the problem is, I'm pretty sure the second map is Dust2 as well. And that's one that, um, that Na'Vi play pretty well too. A good early kill there. Flamey pushing up and Seize will get a refrag quickly on Freakazoid, who hasn't had much of a chance to really get put into play yet. His entry fragging could definitely be uh, great for Cloud9 right here if he can get that game up and running. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate, really, that, well, he will be, they'll get the kill anyways, but that also tells Cloud9 that somebody else is on that site, so they aren't going to rush up behind it as if Seize was alone. They know that there's a second man there, and so they're trying to take advantage of this. Edward with a nice pop flash out at the mid. Nothing full flash. Drops that bomb as well. Edward doing great work, and he gets back around to safety as well. Although I speak too soon. Sean Garris get out, gets out on the balcony and picks him off. A two-on-two -two plant situation now, and that bomb is going to make its way up. Does he go for a default, though? No, he doesn't. He's going to play it safe, and that's actually perfect. That was very scary. Skadoodle had almost no health. He could have got taken out, and the grenade will drop him right after he puts the bomb down, and Sean to die as well. Guardian with the grenade. AWP combo. That was a great angle from Sean, and very nice idea. I mean, he correctly predicted that Guardian was going to jump up on the truck then. Guardian just a little bit too quick, gets a triple in the round, and 7-1. to one. At least Cloud9 put the bomb down this round. That's, what's a shame is that Freakazoid, he goes ahead, but there's no possibility for a refrag there. He didn't have anybody behind him, so he just kind of throws himself in there, and, and he loses that duel. What, what can Cloud9 do? They can't really go back. Seize, luckily for them, actually offers himself up, but... That's one thing that stands out where Cloud9 need to, tight, need to tighten up the, either the communication or the positioning. Can't really be giving that edge to Na'Vi. And so another round of pistols here for Cloud9. Tech Knight sees that. Good, uh, good combination, good mix. The Shroud goes for the Deagle as well. He wants to be, you know, he wants to stand out, Anders. He's going to be special. S someone has to be, right? Mm -hmm. But if you land a, I mean, a, a good Deagle shot, definitely do a little bit of damage. And if they do it right now on Flamey as well, since he's alone, could make for an interesting opportunity. And that's how they won the one round that they had with Shroud just picking off one guy through the smoke and then sort of, you know, just uh, stacking the kills after that. Flamey goes down, sees with a good double spray down to hold on to the B bomb side. And he's going to have to fall back. So definitely going to be a bomb plant here for Cloud9. Winning the round is a very different matter. Nothing trying to sneak in. Is he going to get spotted? Ah, so just going to check it. But nothing gets the kill anyway. Now it's all on Shroud here. And this is a near unwinnable position. 1v3, Deagle and Molotov, and he's going to turn around, and he gets the shot, picks up a rifle, but almost gets the kill on Guardian as well. Nine health left. Not going to be able to do it, so Na'Vi will win the round. That could have been good fun if he could have got that kill on Guardian. Maybe the Molotov could have helped him to buy enough time there. Either way, 8-1, and one, and this is, this is beginning to look ugly. Yeah, this is still brutal, but Inferno being such a CT-sided map, we still can't count Cloud9 out, right? They still have plenty of rounds here to, to get some work in, another six in the mix. And looking at what's happening here, they get the bomb plant, Cloud9, already in that round. That was the whole point of that round. So already they come out ahead there. They've got a little bit of money, and they have everything they need in this round to go through what they've practiced, basically. They have all the Molotovs, they have all the smokes, the HEs, everything. So they can go for something that they know works. Now they just need to make sure that they don't get picked off by Guardian, who's, again, lurking mid with that off. And honestly, for some re weird reason, it seems like whenever Sean is calling on this map, it, it does seem like they, they give up a lot of rounds before something finally sticks, you know? I don't, maybe it's just down to his style that he needs the information beforehand, but Sean... Oh, Guardian gonna be able to kill her. I'll go back to that point in a bit here. Shroud going down. I did catch Sean be right before the game, and he said he's noticed that now they are playing a lot more loosely than they used to do, and it was kind of throwing him off. He said, I'm not really sure why they're doing that, because, you know, they used to play a different style, essentially. So that's also hard. It's very, uh, it's, it's basically that change that Navi have been going through for quite some time. And it's, an it's a natural evolution because remember when they started to go for a lot of like aggressive pushes, you know, this is a slow team, but they started to go aggressive. They started to, it's, it's just a shift in Zeus, basically as the caller saying, well, we need to change our strategies to stay uh, relevant in this, uh, in the current meta. And so Cloud9 also not having much experience against this team is gonna hurt. Uh, now, I mean, 30 seconds left means that Cloud9, either, either they save or they run, but roasting is going to be a part of that as well. C is going to pick up the first man and nothing, for, pretty much stuck here. Double Molotov keeping him from actually getting onto that site, from invading it. C is holding behind the fountain and Flamey holding close behind Oranges. He's going to be able to pick up the first and nothing, no joy. Gets the first kill, but then Flamey shuts him down, or Guardian rather, will do that. So 9-1 to one the score.
Luckily for Cloud9, though, they have enough for a full buy once again. My Guardian is 16 1 and 1. And he's actually been absent in some of the Navi games throughout this tournament here. It's been a lot down to seized and a couple of a couple of games I think where Edward's been stepping it up too. But um here <laughs> in the grand finals, Guardian is showing up uh, quite well prepared it seems. And now I think Cloud9 have to win rounds. Like now, now it's not there, there's nothing much left here. They gotta just string together a bunch of rounds right now. Nothing gonna go down, trying to get Something working in the middle. Sue's gonna get caught though, and that was Skadoodle following up. Gonna almost get the second kill on Edward. Headshot long range puts him on eight health. And a very quick execution coming in here from Cloud9. Straight rush, and Freakazoid will catch out Guardian. <laughs> the raid boss is down. Edward and Flamey, however, still holding the line, and Edward with the double spray down. Gets two headshots as they try and come up onto that site. No joy. Still nothing going Cloud9's way. Even when they try and change up the pace, they don't go for the picks, instead, they go for the aggression. That's not working either. I love the change of pace. I think actually the problem was when they changed it back to the slow pace, as soon as they got around quad there, they kind of stopped and wanted to take a couple of fights. I think the, the thing to do was to continue with that speed before Navi got into any kind of position. Grenade on into the middle to stop Guardian from any kind of early peak. But 10 to 1. This has to finish 10 5 for Cloud9. Otherwise, I don't think they're going to be competitive too much. Even on the second half, it's going to be a really long shot. Sue's going to try and peek out there. They've got the kill on Guardian. So once again, as you said, the raid boss has been taken out. Double, triple, quadruple, just all the grenades into the corner. Make sure Sue's is dead. And Edward's going to take down Skadoodle. So now in the pit, Edward playing. He knows they're coming, but look at how well he's buying time. Grenade after grenade. And now backup is here in Siege, who's shown up as well. And can they actually defend this bomb side? I was thinking about backing off. I mean, they still have a minute left here. They still have a minute left, Cloud9. They don't need to run into the blender, so they actually give away a kill. That's Freakazoid who commits to the site, but then his teammates are like, thanks for that ultimate sacrifice, mate, but you know what? We're going to go over here. That is kind of the right call, though, because Flamey isn't in position to stop this push from coming through. He does have an incendiary to try and buy some time, but he is going to have to rotate around, and now Cloud9, they can get onto this site and get in position to catch him off guard. Flamey, though, playing this very carefully. He knows that Cloud9 are on this site. That bomb just gets planted, and Sean Gares lose the duel, loses it straight up. So it's going to come down to nothing in Shroud, and luckily for them, nothing does manage to find the headshot on Edward. He gets a second one as well. Shroud takes out Seized, and it's going to come down to Flamey now in a 1v2. Crossfire has been established for Cloud9, and the final shot will go to Shroud. Three kills for Shroud total in the round, and Cloud9, they get their second round on the board. Great job there, and... I mean, I think uh, a couple of, a, a nervous tick there on, on Sean as well, because obviously he can see the shadow of Flamey before he walks in, so he has a bit of a, of a chance to react. And I'm, I'm almost wondering if Flamey was trying to bait that out, you know, just like, you know, you know, back and forth a bit and then go for it. Either way, he won the fight, and that was a bit of a yeah, nervous moment there for Cloud9. But they win it. Now they need to take another three in a row. And I'm not sure what Na'Vi's economy is like. I've got a suspicion it's not that great, because even though they've been winning so many rounds, there's been a, a couple of them where Cloud9 have actually done some decent damage, so I think it's possible that they can take one or two more and then force the eco, but now the bomb is dropped. How does Freakazoid have the bomb? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't answer that question, a bit of a problem. Okay, luckily Scott gets out of there in one piece with the bomb, but your entry fragger has your bomb as he tries to push up mid. Hmm. That's a little off. Well, Sean is making his way up into apartments while Shroud is sort of pushing middle. If Sean can find one opening pick on someone rotating around, he will do it. That's a nice headshot to take down Edward. And you can tell that's going to leave the quad player. I think that's Seuss down here in a very awkward position. But he gets a double and Guardian takes down Sean. And now Shroud is going to be alone in a 1v3. And he's got 30 seconds as well left. Guardian trying to buy time. Doesn't get the flick this time. Pushes in and Shroud will take him out. But he's got 10 health left in 25 seconds. And yeah, as soon as he tries to plant, they're going to push through here. No chance for Shroud. At that least was, he gets the plant. I mean, he got the plant, but that was a bit disappointing. Because honestly, as soon as they get the kill, as soon as Sean opens up, and Seuss is playing right in that corner with Flamey shooting him there, as soon as he's in that corner, they should be able to sandwich him in. So he shouldn't be able to get two kills like that. Uh, the coordination there between the, the Cloud9 members were just a bit off. No, that's, uh, that's the real uh, the pinch there, is that Cloud9, I think, are really just feeling the heat. And you can't... You... So no force buy here by Cloud9 either. I'm a bit surprised by this, honestly. When you only have two rounds, you kind of have to throw luck to the wind and just go get whatever you can. Get Tech9, Kevlar, helmets, uh, nades, everything, and just try and run at a site because you desperately need the last two rounds. They go for pistols. They have a couple of nades. But Guardian already in position, having changed it up. Going to miss that peak. So nicely done there by Freakazoid, drawing out the shot. At least they get the info now as to where Guardian's playing from. Cloud9, but 
Still three players here on the B side, and if Cloud9 decide to speed up, this is going to get nasty. Yeah, well, they are actually speeding up a fair bit, running into the bomb site headlong here. Freakazoid looking for an opening, but Flamey with the one, with the two, and see if he can get a little bit more. Seized helping out, and Cloud9, no chance in this round at all. So many members of Navi over here. Flamey with the triple in the end, and we're looking at a 12 to 2 scoreline here on the very first map. This is a brutal start here for Cloud9. No, this is not pretty at all, and so no successful bomb plant. Cloud9 still limited on the cash, and Skadoodle will be able to go for that glass cannon AWP. Sean Gares going for the Tech 9. And now we have to see what Cloud9 have in store for us here in the 15th round. Very one sided match so far. Navi just getting everything right. And in a CT side like this, I mean, Inferno, it is CT sided, but for you to have 12 rounds, you're pretty much skipping at this point. You're going to be dancing around, jumping with joy as Zeus takes out Sean Gares up in apartments. So no success there. No possibility for a refrag either. Cloud9. Basically spread out all over the place, looking to see if they can't find a pick. But it's just not meant to be this time. Resmoking middle is Guardian, and I was just checking, but Navi did actually pick Inferno, and yep. Cloud9 picked us too, just in case anyone was wondering. So, you know, I suppose you could say they picked it for a reason here, and Guardian gonna miss a shot, but Zeus won't give up another double kill. Bomb is dropped, and Guardian, easy pick off there, and well, Shroud is very near the edge as well. Trying to pick up the bomb here and see if he can somehow make it onto a bomb site. In fact, he's just going to be pushing Guardian, and the rest of the team is there as well. No issue. 13 to 2. Utterly convincing victory for Navi on the first half. Yeah. And just a lot of this, I mean, a lot of this comes down to the man sitting at the top of the scoreboard there. And both of them, really, whichever site you went to, if you went to B site, you were dealing with Seized, who just controlled Banana, got the timings on right. As you said, you're praising for that, for him. Him for that at the beginning of the map, yeah. Anders, and he just delivered. But then Guardian, that's godlike opping right there. That's superstar play. Having a 16-1-1 one one yeah. scoreline pretty much three quarters of the way through the half? What is that? It's completely unheard of. Well, I mean, that comes down again to Cloud9 not being able to control the, the, the economy game in this, in this first half here. That they could, one round at the beginning of the half. That one round, and they, you know, Avi could just buy AWP after AWP. Even the Guardian died like two or three times yeah. in the middle, but they could just keep buying it. Um, that could have maybe been uh, handled better. Skadoodle there, going to be taking down Seized, and Edward with a swift reply. Again, a man who handles the pistol very well indeed. Playing over the other side, Shroud underneath the canopy here. Guardian taking a quick fight with him with a Glock, and Shroud now going to get out Glocked here. So many people coming in. Changes the weapon quickly. Skadoodle now trying to hold on, but there's no cover here, and Flamey will take him out with a Tech-9 now. It's a 2v2. As Freakasoy did land two great shots there, going for another one, and the bomb is dropped inside. This could be a turnaround here for Cloud9. They just need to work together. Sean and Freak. This is Guardian and Flamey. Guardian is now going to be changing it up into Pit as well. So Flamey going to go for that bomb plant. No fake here. All the time in the world to just set it up. And now that Guardian's watching short as well. Not the best position, but he, of course he can't know that both players are going to be coming around through Long trying to cover each other. But there it is. The peak from Guardian. Checks Long. Takes Sean Gare's face off. Freakazoid trying to do the best that he can. But Guardian, he just, he just doesn't even need to take this fight. They play it perfectly, Navi. He doesn't need to take the fight, but the way that he takes it, and then Flamey stepping out immediately behind, not letting Freakazord readjust or anything of the sort, just picking up that kill, trading effectively. That's what, that's what makes a championship winning team right there. And Navi, 14 to the scoreline. Complete yeah. and utter destruction here. Don't think this is what Cloud9 was expecting, but like I said, Sean was sort of hinting at the fact that we're not quite, I mean, they've changed their style just so much that it's looking a bit weird to us. It's not quite what we're used to. And, um, you know, right, right in front of a Grand Finals, that's not what you want to be thinking. But at the same time, you see it coming, you have no time to adjust. And Flamey to start. Where was that? Up in apartments. Flamey holding over in T-side apartments. Takes out nothing. Who was going for a bit of, a, bit of an aggressive push. Guardian, instant, instant headshot on Skadoodle. And Edward will catch out Shroud. And they are just losing one player after another here at Cloud9. A defense completely demolished, and that's going to be a free bomb plant for Cloud9, or for Navi. Cloud9 basically running around. Sean Gares and Freakazoid, the last two alive, should basically be not even like looking for exits, because the impact that that's going to have is virtually nil. Hold on to the gear that you have, basically. That's, that's what you need to be doing if you're Cloud9. Navi are going to have so much money. You got to kill here or there. They're not really going to care. And your team is going to be forced buying anyways in the last round here. Got to say, Samra, I wasn't expecting this at all. I, I, if I had to, to sort of take a guess, I'd say Navi would be Cloud9 on this map. Mm -hmm. But I would have given Cloud9 a good 10, 11, you know, win a good pistol round here or there. Maybe you get a little bit more. Um, but somewhere in that area, this is, this is quite shocking. And 
Cloud9 are going to find a way to simply forget about this map. I mean, they're not going to make the comeback happen at 15-2. At it was the fifth or sixth round. I can't remember which. One or the other, but that's the round right there. If Cloud9 win that round and break Na'Vi's economy, yeah. then they can start applying the pressure. Then Guardian doesn't have the AWP. Then Na'Vi are light on nades. All these thens roll into play, and then we have a real map on our hands. But Na'Vi... They won that key round, and then they never gave up. They always had breathing room after that, like you said. Guardian always had his off. They always had their nades. And Cloud9 were always in these forced buy situations. So it's, it can be that simple sometimes. Such a dominant performance. But Edward already tagged fairly low here, and Shroud just decides to rush right in. They line up for him, and he's going to get both headshots. Fantastic work. He could have an AK to work with as well, but he oversteps himself, and Zeus will get the punish. Shroud gone... And that leaves Na'Vi in a three-on-four situation here. Cloud9 pushed down to bottom banana as well, so they've got control of that part of the map. Na'Vi should be fine with that for now. Let's see. So much time left for Na'Vi that they can still make it out here. Again, they're fighting two scouts and two pistols, and they've got the two AKs here, and the one MP7 that maybe they could use for a, for a little bit of uh, scouting. Freakazoid being annoying and landing a great headshot and a follow-up headshot The Freakazoid got there as well. Very good job indeed. Now Flamey alone and without the bomb. Yeah. Great round here for Cloud9. Very aggressive style from Shroud as well. Molotov gonna force Sean out, so... Oh, he's gonna be waiting. Maybe just almost long enough there. It's not a bad idea at all to wait in that position, because if you just run out, you know they're gonna be looking. This is a winnable situation for Flamey. He, he picks up that bomb, he's got 30 seconds to play with. He can pick whichever side he wants here. Skadoodle holding in mid, but if... I mean, Flamey... He's got an AK, he hits a headshot, Ska's dead. 20 seconds left, slowly walking his way up. Not sure if Ska spotted the AK barrel, but Ska changing up his position, falling back more towards Arch, makes you think, makes you wonder. And there it is, running gun with the Tech-9, straight onto the site now at this point, just pre-fire. There's the tag, nicely done by Skadoodle, doing a little bit of damage here, making life a little bit more difficult for Flamey. And Flamey going so far as to fake plant, wow. <laughs> Four seconds left, just leaving it to the very last possible second. Ska not gonna hit that headshot though, Flamey doing a lot of damage. How oh, is he still alive inside this bomb site? Finally going to get taken out by nothing, but that was a very tricky round from Flamey. You can see, tell he wanted to try and win it there. Gets the bomb plant, but Cloud9 are going to win it, and that's going to be 15 to 3. Just, just another 12 rounds here somewhere, and they're good to go. Right? <laughs> They've got a long journey ahead. One step at a time, though, right? Just like in The Hobbit. At, hmm. Let's see. I'm not sure if they're, I mean, yeah, one step at a time, one round at a time here. If Navi can afford to buy with or without that bomb plant, I think they're going to be on their way. We'll see. Cloud9 currently with a much more defensive setup um, than, than maybe I would have liked. I'd like to see them just at least get a little bit of info out on Banana here, try and see if they can fight Navi for it a bit, because right now Navi have the whole map to execute on, more or less. Nobody's in apartments for uh, the CT side, and they're holding far back here inside the B-bomb site, so can make things tricky. Ooh, I like that a lot. You know what, clear out that close angle. Well, I, I like Flamey getting shot in the face by his teammate a little less there, but... Yeah, that's not optimal. <laughs> they've got two Molotovs, so they could firebomb up where Sean is, and they've got obviously more smokes for Freakazoid. Might just be a, well, it's almost like a fairly standard execute towards the B-bomb side at this point in time, but Cloud9 are rotating another person in here. Uh, I think Skadoodle is showing up to try and help out with that AK, so... Na'Vi, traditionally very slow team, terrorist side Inferno, and about 35 seconds, they're gonna start to lay down the smokes. Molotov to follow as well, let's see if Cloud9 can hold this, or if we're already gonna be onto Dust2. Seas is leading the charge, running into the bomb site. Sean holding all the way on the left here, and they are trying to check that corner, but it's not so easy. As they jump up, Freak, so it's gonna be traded. Sean goes down, and now it's looking very bad, and sneaking up from behind, it's gonna be Edward shooting Skadoodle in the back. How on earth did he get all the way in there without anybody spotting him? Nothing in Shroud are left. 2v4. This is one hell of a performance from Na'Vi. It's almost like Edward thought that he was a CT player there for a second. It's been 20 days. And, well, there we have it. 16 wow. rounds picked up by Na'Vi. Cloud9 completely demolished in the first map of this best of three finals. Na'Vi making short work of them. And it's really hard to say what, uh, what needs to happen apart from how does one slay a god 
Yeah, Seuss is hard to uh, to take out when he's calling at this level here. I mean, really, really solid CT side, and um, on the Terra side, you can tell that they had so many rounds to play with. They just thought, well, let's just go for like the, the you know a fairly easy execute towards that B bomb side, and we'll make it work. Oh, that's um, really rough. Yeah, I think Cloud9 just need to forget about this map, honestly. Just say, okay, that's it. That was their map pick. We knew that they're pretty good on Inferno. Maybe our results on Inferno are a bit sketchy. And then let's move on. It's the it's what you see, man. It just sinks that 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 sensation where your belly just kind of like sinks, right? Everything just sinks because you see that for you see that tweet with the map pick, and you're like Inferno, Dust2, Overpass. Yeah. Three really good maps for Navi. For Navi. Yeah. And that's why. But we'll let you guys ponder that during the break. We'll be back five minutes time with the second map. It's going to be Dust2 between Navi and Cloud9 for the championship here at ESWC Montreal. Hi. Do it. <laughs> trying to mess with these wires. All right, welcome back, everyone. It's going to be map two here. We've on, uh, gone on to dust two between uh, Navi and Cloud9 in the grand finals of ESWC. Are you sorting everything out? Do you need help? Yeah. <laughs> help me, Anders. <laughs> Look, you, uh, you said that uh, it was a dust mort who brought up a good point on Twitter that... Uh, I thought so. Yeah. I, thought, I mean, you Tell have us. one ban. Right at the beginning, it's ban, ban, pick, pick. Mm. One ban each team to begin with. And so you have the choice between banning Inferno or banning Mirage, really, when it comes yeah. to Navi. So, yeah. um, so damned if you do, damned if damned you don't. Exactly, right? And, and we're if, using different words before we went live, but... Um, but it, you yeah. Know, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, I guess Cloud9, like the reasoning behind it, and this is, uh, this is something that Dust constantly emphasizes as well, is just that uh, you know, Cloud9 are feeling confident in their CT side. But then they lose the knife, they start T-side. And so, yeah. again, they don't have a chance to do anything. They get completely railroaded before they can even put their CT side into play. But then you, I can understand the reasoning as well. You don't want to play Navi on Mirage. That's, yeah. that's a bad time. Guardian just does horrible things to you on that map. Yeah, I mean, I'm, Moses was tweeting earlier saying, you know, Navi must be happily confused every time someone decides to play them on Mirage. Like, well, okay, I guess. <laughs> I asked Guardian, too. He was like, well, yeah. we're, we're fine with it. Yeah, right? well, I was like, well, of course you are. Keep doing it. Guardian. Um, I mean, I think they have a much better chance, Cloud9, on Dust2. Mm -hmm. Navi have been banning Dust2 in, in, in picking stages for, for a long time. And I think that's led a lot of people to believe that it means they're somewhat bad at playing the map. That's definitely not true. Uh, it may be that, Na that Navi you know, feel like this is their worst map, but I think it's more like a confidence issue. Navi used to be terrifying on this game, on this map, and there's no reason why they couldn't be able to. But they might have had less practice on it. They might be feeling a little bit less confident, but I don't think they're going to be, you know, anywhere near bad on this map. No, and if Guardian can continue to, if he maintains this pace, right, if he doesn't burn out after the first map and start dropping low, I mean, sure, you still have players to pick up the slack, like Flamey, like uh, Edward, you know, but the impact that Guardian can have on this map, he could change the game himself, by himself. And look at this, Freakasoid in the middle, picking one, picking two, Edward and Guardian both down. Great start in Freakasoid, he wants to fight and almost wins it against Seuss. Look, he's down to 12th health. And now Smoke goes up, not going to cover the whole cross there, but they're inside the B-bomb site. And this should not be a winnable round. Shroud will take down Seuss and now Flamey. 1v4. If they don't fight him, they win 100% of the time. If they fight him, they probably still win 80% of the time here. Flamey gonna pick up one, and now it's a 1v3. He's got no kit, he's got no grenades, and they are gonna go for the safer option here. And that's smart. Good call on, uh, on Cloud9 right now. Like the only real option, right? Play it safe. Safety in numbers at this point. Like pack animals, basically. And uh, Flamey, is he gonna get declawed? Does he hold on to his Kevlar? Doesn't look like it. Oh, although he does win the duel versus Sean Garris, he will get caught by nothing in the end. So no saving. And Cloud9. There we go. The crowd starting to make some noise. Cloud9, get that strong start on Dust2. I mean, so the difference between, you know, 100% winning the round or 99% winning the round is in, at this level, when you're at like the, the you know, the peak of the, of the pro scene, is actually pretty significant. You want to make it 100%. That 99% is not quite good enough. Because, um, yeah, 1% uh, if you're playing against a team like, uh, like Na'Vi could end up uh, backfiring quite badly. Over at Long here, quick trade and the follow-up grenade could have um, maybe taken out a couple of people there. Skadoodle and Freakasoid are low. Gotta be careful they don't line up for the scout here and looks like they are not going to be uh, doing just that either. And Skadoodle has one of his own. Cloud9 could easily make this crossover and get the bomb plant quick and I kind of wish they would. Yeah, there it is. There's the boost, basically. Guardian's now up on that side. He can try and look above the smoke. Seas is going to find the shot onto Freakazoid and Edward now very close to this P250, well within lethal range. Just attempting to find some kind of target through the smoke here. A Guardian will be able to take out Shroud and the hesitation is costing Cloud9. Guardian going to work. Two kills now. 
and that leaves it down to nothing, and he decides to go for the scout. Mono and mono, Guardian, stand your ground, take the fight. Nothing, not going to be able to land one just yet. 49 seconds, and the clock is ticking. He needs to get up onto A slope. That's where the bomb is. He needs to make the cross, but three players, it's just a firing squad, and Guardian finds the last one. Three kills for him total in the round, making the difference, and pretty much just snuffing Cloud9. And you, you, I think you had the nail right on the head there, Samla, because it, the, it was the hesitation, slowing down, and I, I know for a fact that they're going to be behaving themselves. I had this conversation with Sean in Cologne. I, 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 we talked about it. What's the best move against scouts? And a oh, nice shot wow. there. Sean not even getting a chance to exit T-spawn. But Good night, sweet prince. We had this conversation. What's the best play against scout on Dust2? And a, a lot of people now seem to think if you just rush long, smoke the cross, and run straight up and put the bomb down, that's where you get the most out of the round. And they did half of that, and then they just slowed down. And that's where the round kind of ended for them. Well, nothing to follow it. And now Guardian's in position on A slope as well. So if they go up cat, Guardian's going to be in a prime spot. They have a single flash on Shroud. They're going to have to make a count. All four players gathered up here for Cloud9. There's the flash. There's the cross. Guardian lets them pass. But Zeus is there with the MP7. Catches out Freakazoid. Edward going to be rotating in as well. Guardian has spotted out the push. And Skadoodle, just a hail of bullets going in. But Flamey comes out of nowhere, picks up the one. This is going to turn into basically another slaughter. Na'Vi holding strong with three players alive versus a force buy from Cloud9. They're perfectly fine with that because they know there's going to be an eco following it. And so they'll be able to make that money back here. Oh man, if they could have got the kill on Guardian, that would have been a little bit interesting. But I think you're right. They should be realizing that the, this is going to be a round where they can make a lot of this money back here. Two to one in a situation where Cloud9 are already thinking, well, we should have been 3-0 at this point here. Should have had a pretty good lead, but they need to forget about that. I love how Guardian doesn't even like try and cheat the odds or anything like aiming left or right. He's just, he's so confident in his flicks, he just aims dead middle. He's like, if you peek anywhere within this radius, you're a dead man. Yeah. Uh, he is just that fast. Well, uh, that was uh, a real bloodbath. A real uh, bloodbath over at <laughs> A long. I'm not sure how I mixed up all Ooh. those letters. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll save inventing new words for, uh, for after the cast. We'll Two letters are enough for you, Anders. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh no, well, fifth round here, and um, a pretty quick move out on Trelong from Cloud9. They don't have an AWP on Skadoodle, which means challenging Guardian is going to be difficult, and Sean, yeah, getting the short end of the stick over there. And Guardian just being so unpredictable. He's in mid, he's at long cross, he actually takes the fight, Cat pushes aggressive there, he hasn't done that yet, so Cloud9, naturally they get caught off guard by it. And now he's actually looking long, doesn't realize that somebody's waiting in pit, so this could be a little bit tricky here. Shroud could have a golden opportunity to go for a peek and take somebody's face off. He's looking for that peekaboo moment, but he's going to get slammed down by Flamey. And now Freakazoid trying to spray it up. He's just a second too late. Zeus wins that duel, and it's just going to come down to nothing in Skadoodle. Last two alive. No AWP for Skadoodle, and, well, nothing. Chucks out that flash. Not really effective. I mean, it keeps Guardian ducking for a second, but then four players are here for Na'Vi. I... I don't think that that was, I mean, that round could have been played better. It's really tough when they lose that entry frag, but once Shroud is in the pit and he sees three people pushing down A long, he can actually just call for a teammate and say, can someone please just flash over the wall? There's no skybox there anymore. Someone flash over for long, you can do it all the way from out here. It's no problem. And then he can go and take the peak. But taking the fight against three people like that is a big risk, and I don't think that was necessary. Zeus here, grenade and MP7 follow up, and they are getting slaughtered once again. Yeah, both Sean Garris and Freakazoid down to like 20 HP. They were stacked when that nade went in there. No Kevlar to mitigate the damage either. And while nothing, that bomb is on the other side. You're going to have to make the play here, mate. Tries to stand out, tries to find the shot, and he will get the headshot on Zeus. So revenge for his fallen mates. And Flamey's fairly low as well, so he has to play careful. But then Edward just comes rushing in. No respect. Takes nothing out. And that's a 5-1 scoreline now for Na'Vi. And here's, here's the, we're getting into the danger zone. 10,000 plus on Guardian. 10,000 on Seized. They've got ops for days. Like, how do you get, to get it to the point now where Guardian doesn't have money to buy an op? I don't know. I'm trying to think what, what a really good play is. I mean, if Skadoodle come with this fight in the middle against Guardian, that would be amazing. And there nice. it is. Takes him out. And that's the kind of start. And you can hear the crowd. They know the significance of that shot as well. Seuss will go down. Flamey will go down. Shroud and Freakasoid teaming out over and along to get the opening frags there. But Edward being very sneaky here in the middle. Just crouching through the smoke. He's heard one guy pass him. He knows the A-bomb side is lost. Is he going to be able to run out long? Did he hear um, Skadoodle running back there? I'm not sure. Might have heard him now. And it looks like he's going to wrap back around to Cat. So this is a little bit tricky now. It might be a situation where Na'Vi, they just want to back off and save. 
that would be the smart decision to go for. Even if you have mountains of cash, it doesn't hurt to save. Exactly. If you can hold on to an AWP, that's 47000 Well, 47000 4700 dollars you just saved. Do you have like a gold-plated AWP somewhere? I was thinking Swedish kroner, bro. $47,000 AWP. Diamond scope. Well, Edward and Seized are left. And um, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. It'd be great if they can save one of the expensive rifles. Even, even if they have a lot of money, uh, you don't want to run out. And there's that, that nuclear bomb. Fire and flames. And so now Cloud9, well, they're going to be able to start picking up a little bit of momentum. But what? Does what? Just what? Okay, then. That's a <laughs> really expensive way to spend your money. He's going to hold on to it as well. <laughs> I love it. Well, okay then, Seize. He's just hoping for a B rush. He's like, you know what? They've gone A so many times now. They've gone A so many times. I swear they're going to come here. I swear. Seize has been ru watching Rambo and he's thinking, well, I'm in America now. <laughs> I'll show them how it's done. It's the Russian Rambo <laughs> coming through. He's not going to get it. Oh, it's so close. It could have been. It could have worked. <laughs> he's got the bandana and everything. Sean is going to be falling back and. He's in a pretty awful 1v3 with a bomb down here, trying to see if he can fight it out. Seized. He's actually swapped for the AK, and I'm hugely disappointed. Very sad. Sean moving up. He goes down to Edward. What a round. That was so silly. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to make this work. Can somebody, cause, can somebody please Photoshop Seized face onto Rambo with the, you know, the big, the big light machine gun there? I like that. Oh, man, but this is a real problem now. Cloud9, again, no consecutive, consecutive round wins. They're not breaking Navi's money. And now Guardian takes out Shroud, who's running down suicide. Mm. That makes sense. But Guardian, he's like, this is a bait. Edward, he's gone. But then Guardian's already locked in. If Skadoodle goes for the peak, and there you go. Freakazoid baits. That's so sick. Great teamwork and communication there between both of those players. Yeah, very nicely done. Just making sure that... Uh they can at least get a bit of control in the middle. Still be nice if they can force Guardian all the way back so that he's not going to be a, a threat there anymore. The meat bombs, in the meantime, they haven't really gone much for B, so maybe it's time they actually do test out the strength of the defense over here. Who knows? Maybe Seized is going to be a bit sleepy now that he doesn't have that Negev anymore. Spraying down and actually gets a good shot there and a second one with the last few bullets looking for the triple with the pistol and finally replied. But Flamey is now shown up and backup is coming quick. They're being flanked extremely fast by Seuss as well and it doesn't even matter because Flamey's going to get the kill and a double. So no entry at all for Cloud9 now. They're five rounds behind and it, it probably is about to get worse as they have no money to buy. 15,000 on Edward as well. So I, mm, I actually want to see Cloud9 be a lot faster here. I think the slow play is really hurting them. I want to see them like, go for an A rush and then keep going, or go for a B split, but do it real, real fast, and don't slow down until you have to bomb down. Oh, and here they go, straight through mid. Guardian misses the shot. He's at risk. The flash is going to go through. He's completely blind, and Trout running gun, and Edward is there to save his life. Guardian still lives, and he drops Freakazoid as well. And that leaves it down to Skadoodle. He's got 12 HP. And the, the thought was there, Anders. The thought was there. But you kind of want to see them do this with rifles. Yeah, I, I really do. I think slowing down right now, it, 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 they don't have to do it for, you know, six rounds in a row, but just get a couple of rounds in where now we feel like the, the pace is changing and they have to change up their style a little bit. Because right now, Guardian is just running all over the map and looking for picks, and the rest of Navi have no trouble. I mean, as soon as anything happens, they throw out a couple of counter flashes and Cloud9 slow down, and then they can call in the heavy artillery and Guardian, you know, they just wheel that cannon into place and then. It's all bad again. Can you hear it? YOLO! Straight out on long, and nothing gets the headshot. Takes out Flamey. There's the opening. No time wasted at all. They could go into a very fast A split, but the early rotation coming out from Navi. They're going to try and get clever here. Edward boosted up, and he gets the headshot on Freakazoid. So sick. Drops that bomb as well. So now Navi know what's up. And they've already got C's going for the flank. He's going to go jumping straight into Skadoodle, and that's actually a bit of a lucky break. Nothing manages to take out Edward, and now it's just going to be down to the raid boss himself, Guardian. 1v4 with that AWP, they're going for the jump shots and he can't hit the flick. Sean Gares will take his face off and there we have it. A third round on the board for Cloud9. Yeah, and a round where once they started fighting, they pretty much never stopped. They just kept going all the time and that's going to make life so much harder for Na'Vi, at least for a while. Now <laughs> Na'Vi and Reply have gone for another double up setup here. See if Skadool can manage it, if he's even going to try in the middle. He is set up there and no one from Na'Vi is going to try and challenge him early on. And now, 
Uh, yeah, a bit of a, a nip style of defense over at long. We put down the Molotov, and it's actually supposed to go into to long, and then the double grenade. That's something that Nip have done very successfully, and a bunch of teams have adapted. And the follow-up, Guardian, he's actually going to play it safe. He doesn't want to get it within rush distance. So, smoke down, but there's the flash from Freakazoid. He does catch Flamey off guard, but then counter flash comes out. They do manage to get past that, but Flamey with the angle, and he, get, he gets, a, got, gets caught, basically, by Shroud. I know, perfect English, thank you. But Shroud through the smoke is going to take out Zeus as well, and now they're starting to wake up here, Cloud9. They're having enough. Guardian standing in the middle of the ramp, which is a very scary position there. See, it's going to go down. Now this might be all up to Guardian. He's essentially in a 1v4. Backup is miles away. If they come for him now, he's going to be alone. But they got the bomb in the middle, and Edward's going to take a kill on nothing. It's back to a 2v3. Cloud9 just have to group up here. Edward going to go down, though. Skadoodle sees the shot, and Guardian, nice shot on Shroud. But they should be able to do this. 1v2, smoke is up here. And another couple of grenades into middle. Gonna take the bomb the safe way around. But look how confident and how aggressive the Slovakian player is here. He's already into the middle. Bomb will be going down. And we know how much damage he can do. Looking for the one opening here, flashbang out. He's got the money to fight this. He might as well try and go for it. He goes down to Sean though. And Cloud9 win the round. 8-4. Very tense moment there. Even in a 2v4, you see just how much damage Navi can do. Exactly, that you're holding your breath the entire time when Guardian is still alive, you, because he's just so good right now that you think he can still do this. Like, yeah, yeah what, 1v3? No problem. He can, he's got this in the bag. Incredible, the pressure that he's putting on Cloud9. And Cloud9 going for a double op place. Skadoodle and Sean Gare is interesting. We don't see this every day right now, so... Trying to make use of it, but again, Freakazoid holding long alone. He's going to have the help of Shroud pretty soon, and nicely done. Guardian getting caught out in the open. Navi may be getting a little ahead of themselves here. Flamey trapped in the corner as well. Freakazoid coming into play. It's been a long time coming. They needed him on Inferno, and he kind of wasn't there, but this double opening is big for the Cloud9 team. Navi's economy is going to be reset if they lose this round. They'll be ecoing, and then Cloud9 have a real chance to get back into it. Zeus walking up, but Shroud again hiding in the pit. And it's going to be taking him out to now 5v2. This is looking so much better for Cloud9. It's up to Edward and Seize. And even though they're walking right into where they're stacked up, I don't think it's going to be enough here. Seize gets a kill, gets a double, and Edward sprays down. Surely they can group up here. Seize now with a triple, and there's only two people left before they make a run for it. And this is a very silly round from Cloud9. There is no reason they had to get this far. They could have just all rushed in and it would have been even better. Instead, they kind of took that fight one at a time. I'm having flashbacks at this point, though. Again, <laughs> they go out onto the B site and seized. Now that nade going off should tell him something. Yep, realizes he's at the wrong bomb site. He's going to start heading over towards the B. Well, he has no information to go off of. This is an impossible situation for him. Again, just like what Guardian walked into, there's going to be a, cross a crossfire established. Skadoodle puts the shot through the doors. That's drawing the attention and nothing holding close. There. What a shot, though. Takes out Skadoodle. Spots out nothing. This could be it. Oh, my God. Seized. Ace clutch for him. He's got the kid. He's got all the time. What a play. And Cloud9 losing a round that should have been theirs 100% of the time. A five-on-two situation, and it's seized with an ace. Yeah, and that... That is only possible when they just walk in one at a time. And I, in my opinion, that is, if you had to put sort of a, a, a phrase on it here, the difference between a call and, and having leadership. Someone should have taken the reins on Cloud9 and said, look guys, either nobody peeks or we all peek at the same time. But no one would ever make the call to say, hey, let's try and trickle into this bomb site one at a time. But there was probably just a complete lack of communication, which meant every player decided to sort of just play on their instincts and their instincts were just wrong in this case. That was definitely an awful situation, and, and they know it as well. This is going to be a really big slowdown, but a nice opening here. Shroud taking out Flamey. Sue's trapped in a corner. They might be able to bring it back here. Freakasoid charging in with a Tech-9, looking for the opening. Going to be bringing down Susan. It's back into a 5v3, although <laughs> he's still alive there. Uh, the monster is here now. Holding on long, and so do Cloud9 commit to this? Edward going to jump up on the cat. He hits the timing perfectly. Nothing sprayed down. Two on three. Once again, this is happening. And Seize, not sure if he got the information there, not sure if he got the info when the spot comes through, but that flash that goes off and Seize can't really go for the peak. Edward is holding the line, however, he catches out Skadoodle out in the open, and Shroud, Sean Gares, both of them going to leap onto the site. Edward will get caught, but there is Seize coming into play, picks up the first man, and now knows that Sean Gares is playing from the site as well. Goes jumping up, but it's not going to happen this time. Sean Gares puts an end to it, and Cloud9 pick up a fifth round. That is Not sure terrifying. if my heart can take this, Anders. <laughs> That's terrifying, isn't it? 
Well, for the 15th round, Na'Vi's economy finally breaks, but um, at least they can still buy armor and a couple of scouts here. And I honestly, the way Cloud9 are playing right now, I don't feel too confident here. Out on long, though, they actually will get the well, the loose Freakasoid to flame, even though they were almost triple peaking him then. Seized playing with the 5 7 as they come through. Skadoodle's gonna go down next in line, might be Shroud, but he does survive. It's still a 2v3, and Guardian with a headshot through the smoke onto Shroud. Leaving nothing, far away from the bomb and with no teammates. Oh, all by his lonesome, rushes up, tries to catch the man off guard. That's going to be Zeus sprayed down. But they're still Guardian, they're still Edward, and both of them are hitting incredible shots right now. There's Guardian taking the peak, overextending somewhat, but he's still buying time. A lot of time on the clock, though, for nothing to play with, but it's not going to matter in the end. Guardian swaps out for the AK and gets the job done versus nothing to close the half at 10-5. to 5. Navi with a huge lead going in. And Navi across the board right now. Guardian started off strong, but, you know, 14 flamies, seized with 12. I mean, they're all in double digits. That's, yeah. that's the message here. Whereas everybody on Cloud9 just really struggling. They're all sitting around the single digit mark. There were plenty of close rounds in this game, and, and there were obviously some truly horrific mistakes. That 2v5 is going to haunt them for a very, very long time. And um, that's, where you, that's where you need a really, really strong leader. Someone who will, who will shout at the whole team and say, just stop this right now. We've got time. We've got everything we need. I mean, as soon as they know where one person is, they could just all rotate back to B, and there would have been a flawless victory. Oh, man. Yeah, that's hard to, that's hard to live down. Second half coming into it here, and Na'Vi going to be rushing straight into the B-bomb side, but Sean is there, picks up one, and it's a shooting gallery. Nothing with a double, with a triple, and now Na'Vi just getting shot down. Bomb dropped in the sight here. Cloud9 finally stepping up and taking what's theirs, and Edward, he somehow gets a ridiculous shot from the smoke and takes down Sean, but... It's still, I mean, I'm hesitant to say this now, Samla, but there's no way he can win this round. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still not going to count it out here. Edward, I mean, we've seen what he's capable of with the pistol. He gets spotted by nothing, though, and that's all the information that Cloud9 need. Now this should be an impossible situation for Cloud9 to lose. There's no element of surprise here for Edward, and they've got all the entrances onto that B site covered. He still has a minute left, so he can try and play around, keep Cloud9 guessing, but there's two entrances onto this bomb site. The bomb is dropped out in the middle of nowhere, and they've got the Triangle of Doom established. So Freakazoid spots out Edward, and now Edward just hoping for him to re-peak, but Freak doesn't even need to. He can let some other player on his team be that first point of contact, and there it is, nothing. Quad kill for him. Yeah, great stuff. Um, and you're right, Freak, Freak playing it really well. Why would he be the first one to take the peak? He knows he has to get in and get the bomb. As soon as somebody else sees him, he's instantly in a crossfire, and that's definitely the smarter way to play it there. So 10 to 6. Scout being picked up on Skadoodle and mostly submachine guns on everyone else except for nothing. And then it's a triple Tech 9 armor on Navi's side, except for Flamey actually, who's bought a bunch of grenades instead of armor. And Navi right now are thinking, hey, you remember that time we went to B? We want to do that again. <laughs> it went so well. Now uh, they're going back to a bit more of a default strat here, putting four players in mid, actually leaving long completely unprotected. So this isn't actually super standard, but this could get interesting. Do they let the bomb go alone in upper halls, or are they going to start rotating somebody back? They're just looking for a pick at this point. Zeus trying to get some information on the setup. They realize that Cat is clear, nobody holding here, so... What is this telling Na'Vi? And they're going to put a single smoke into the A-bomb site, probably hoping to distract the player playing in CT spawn, so that that way, when they get out middling, is it free? So Sort of is distracted, but he comes into the middle as well, sprays down Guardian and wants to run through. He's kind of on half health, but he still gets the double Kill at the end there, and now Seized has the bomb, but inside the bomb site waiting is nothing, and he's going to win that fight as well. So 10 to 7. Good attempt, I think, anyway, from Navi. It's not too bad, you know. That smoke could have distracted Freak just enough that maybe they could have made their way in. Yeah, you got to give it to uh, Freak for the individual play, but also Sean Gares basically moving around his, uh, his teammates so that they were in an ideal position to deal with that kind of B-split push. Nothing also rotating out a window, establishing the crossfire with Freakazoid. They were right on all fronts there, Cloud9. So the calls can be, the one, be what makes the difference here. Navi, they've got the Guardians, they've got the Seas, you know, they've got everybody hit, you know, firing on all cylinders, but <laughs> if you stack the ads in your, the odds rather in your favor, Cloud9 could come out ahead here. Flamey will be able to gun down Shroud, but then Skadoodle's still holding the line here. Yeah, gonna get a kill with the Scout as well. That was a great grenade to start off that round with. Practically, I think uh, one of the Navi members that caught the grenade in his hands, but yeah, 10 to 8. But this is where the big test is going to come through. Cloud9, when they were on the terrorist side, they didn't manage to win this round. And that's how Na'Vi got that great start. They shut down the first buy round. But now, 
it's going to be interesting. If uh, Cloud9 can win this and bring it back to 10-10, there's still a chance they can win this game and put us on to overpass, and we'd love that here at the Grand Finals after all. And it seems like Cloud9 have really had a hard time in the first map especially, and also the beginning of the second map. And Navi now just going for textbook stuff as well. We do actually have the double push in Upper Dark right now for Cloud9, and this is really cool to see. They're getting so much information. And they hit the timing perfectly. Flamey has just been looking there, and now he's not, so... They have no idea that this is coming. It's going to be very uncomfortable. Guardian has the bomb as well, so if they catch him and kill him, that's going to be really tricky. Sean hesitating, though. He doesn't want to try and tap away with the MP7, and maybe you can't blame him for it, but that means nothing is going down. And now Sean really has to come back big into this round here for them. Otherwise, this is going to be very tricky. Zeus looking the right way. It's almost as if, though, he knows. 50 seconds on the clock, the bomb up on Catwalk, and Sean trying to just play this on pure instinct. He wants to know when the timing is right. He sees the shadow of the smoke then, and it's going to be getting that kill on Seuss, but he can't pick up the rifle. It somehow bounces away, S steals the M4A1 from his fallen teammate instead, and it's back into a 4v4. Now we have wasted a lot of time now. At least they got that out of the push. Th 30 seconds, and they're going to be pushing back towards the B bomb site. And he's going to need a lot of backup here. Yeah, and there's Freakazoid trying to hit that timing with the pop flash through. But all of Navi basically going through the B-Halls. This is going to be very interesting. They're just going for the run and gun method. Sean Gare's on the outside of the site. And he hears the steps too late. He's going to take the peek, but he risks it big. And Sean Gare's getting tagged down through those doors. 50 HP left on him. Four on four situation. And Navi with 10 seconds left will just barely get that bomb plant down. Edward moving a little bit closer. Freak is ready to get in through the window if needed, but they are all outside. No one pushing up here for Cloud9. And Edward, cheeky peek there, gonna take down Skadoodle. Freak is gonna fall as well. Now it's up to Shroud in a 1v3. He sprays one, but he's gonna get trapped in there and seized. We'll come up with a double. Guardian as well, and that will be 11 to 8. Somehow Cloud9 were quite sure that there was gonna be someone in middle, because you can tell they threw all those flashbangs to go in and peek it and that sort of locked them out of the bomb site. It's not too bad playing from outside the bomb site, but what you want to do is be ready for it. So when they come in and try and make the cross, you kill one or two, and then, yeah, maybe they get the bomb down, but you're still in a pretty good position. They definitely got caught way out of off guard there, Cloud9. Yeah, expecting this, well, they're expecting the same kind of B splits that Navi have been attempting. So they're not realizing that Navi might change it up, and that's, that definitely cost Cloud9 in this situation, but they still had the money, so it's not over yet. Still have the money for a buy, four rifles and an AWP on Skadoodle. They're very light on the nades. So again, going for that upper push, but this time around, Ed, oh, Flamey instead is actually there to hold, but it's not gonna work out for him at all. Two targets, one too many, and he gets overwhelmed, so Flamey is down, and now Cloud9, they just fall back and play from the sights. Standard stuff. Yes, they should. I feel like the worst thing that happened to Cloud9 right now is if they lose another round and they can't afford that AWP on Skadoodle anymore. They need to keep that alive, and you can tell he only barely has it. He's got nothing else, no armor or anything. So if he gets into a fight with someone in an AK, it's not going to be fun at all. Looking like another split push here coming out. Sue still playing in the middle. He doesn't have a smoke, but he's got a Molotov. Sean in the back lines here. Good kill on Seized, and he just has to wait. He doesn't have to peek this. Just wait it out, at least until Sue shows up with the Molotov. He's going to be just fine. And there is uh, Guardian Seuss going down. Molotov reigns in, but it's too late. Sean's already dead, and Edward is alone here. Spraying, not connecting, and nothing defending. Triple kill here, and 11-9. This is actually looking winnable now for Cloud9. They've broken that Na'Vi economy. Their own isn't looking fantastic, but it's enough that they can lose around and still buy. Yeah, and if, uh, exactly. If Na'Vi decide to go for pistols here, Cloud9 can start to make that, bu make that buffer. And so... We have, what, a P250 and a Deagle. The rest of it glocks for Na'Vi. So this is a huge opportunity now for Cloud9 to bring it to 10-0, but also get that buffer established and just make life a little bit easier for themselves. Na'Vi going straight up Cat as well. Zeus just wants to get in here. He realizes, wait, they haven't been going aggressive Cat at all. They're actually going default 2 on 2 And so Zeus, this is so much information. He's just barreling up onto that site. Bomb is still waiting around in mid, but Na'Vi, they're just hoping to get a pick at this point, and Freakazoid holding close to CT is going to be able to win that duel fairly easily. Skadoodle will take out Guardian, and that leaves Edward all by his lonesome over here in mid, hoping that somebody's going to go ahead and peek mid. But when it does happen, misses the shot with that Deagle, so nothing going Na'Vi's way in this round. Going to bring Cloud9 one step closer at 10-11 here. And as you were pointing out, because they hopefully won't lose anyone this round, their economy is actually going to start to, to really blossom a bit here. They just need to not die to Edward. Where is the shot? Where is it? I mean, yeah, don't die to the Deagle. But 
This is a confidence boost and a perfect round. Well done there by Cloud9. This will boost their confidence. This will give them some money, a little bit of breathing room. So important going into this next crucial round right here where Na'Vi are going to go for the Force. Guardian, once again, not having the, the money for an op, though. And that's a problem. Na'Vi, they're trying to go for quick strats, but you want to get Guardian that sniper rifle no matter what. We saw, we've seen the impact that he can have with the gun. Yeah, I mean, that first half was a bit of a testimony to how, how important that can be. Nothing pushing up into lower dark while the rest of Na'Vi, or almost all of Na'Vi, are setting up in upper dark, so he's going to have more targets than he can kill if they all come for him, but if he just walks up behind the timing... Oh god, the timing, nothing is here, he's going to get the first kill, he misses a couple of shots, but still, look at Na'Vi, completely confused, and he's going to wall himself up, trying to make sure they can't get to him, and Skadoodle is in the middle to help him out, so the Zeus is going to go down. They are trying to see if they can fall back here, but that's a huge flank from nothing. It would have been beautiful if he had got like a triple kill, but just the kill and surviving is still huge for them. And there's Skadoodle picking up a shot, going for another one, missing the flick. Guardian is very nearly dead though. Grenade and Guardian is gone. It's going to be Edward alone in a 1v3. The perfect touchdown there from Skadoodle. What a round, and this is going to be the equalize here from Cloud9. 11-11. Edward is being wrapped around as well. Shroud coming in, and Skadoodle gets the quad kill to finish it. And Navi, not only are they going to be kicking themselves because they lost a round, but they're going to be kicking themselves because that was four people. Yeah, there we go. The pause comes through. They need to slow down the pace here, Navi. That was four people watching Upper Dark, or yeah. watching the entrance to B. Four. You don't have one guy actually watching up Lower Dark when you're setting up? Yeah, How does nothing get in there for free? Well, they probably lured themselves into sort of a false sense of confidence because they had one guy playing top mid, only he wasn't actually looking middle, he was just further back. So in their minds, they're probably thinking, well, we, we got like most of the map covered, don't we? That's on Zeus then. He was that man, top mid. Yeah. And, I, mean, I mean, one thing to go off of perhaps also is that Cloud9 has been uh, going for a double push in upper dark. So yeah. perhaps Navi are thinking, maybe we'll get lucky, get them, uh, you know, greedy. <laughs> Four of us here, boom, we shut them down, we go onto the site. Could be uh, what was behind them, uh, behind the thoughts as well. Yeah, and nothing able to restrain himself as well. Um, I mean, about a year ago when nothing was playing CSGO, I think he, you would have seen him like re -peak a couple of times to get like a couple more kills, yeah. just because he, he, you know, maybe just you know remembering his 1.6 days, thinking, oh, this is 1.6. I, I would have, I would have got all these kills, so I'll just try and go for it anyway. I love the decision. Whereas he realizes, okay, like I bought the mission, I only got the one kill, and I can't get any more. I'll throw out a grenade on the Molotov, and then I'll be safe. That's actually a much smarter choice, and sounds easy enough to make that call, but it isn't always. You know, you 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 get a little bit, you know, caught up in the action, and you want to do a little bit more. If he goes down, then all of a sudden Navi are just like they're just shrugging and thinking, well, great, you know, now we're in a good position. Exactly, and it's and it also it's just giving your so your team so much information because where do Navi go? So long yeah. as you hold the line there and you got somebody alive on B site, there's only one way for Navi to back out of that situation. So either they're going into T spawn or they're going towards B. Yeah, and got to get a lot of credit to Nothing, honestly. You know, he's playing. He's been very sick all day. Uh, been fighting to actually just uh, you know stay mentally in the game as well. But he's got 20 kills. He's top fragging here, and he is quite literally carrying Cloud9 back into a victory. Nothing charging up here. It's going to be Shroud though to get three kills, and then the Deagle is out. I think he stole this earlier as well. Nothing with the grenade and Edward alone. And look at look at the crowd here. They're absolutely loving it. 12 to 11 is going to be the scoreline. Cloud9 take the round lead for, I guess, the second time in the game if you want to count the first round they won, but. It's been a long time coming here. We might be seeing a third map. Yeah, it's starting to actually look possible now. Navi is just trailing behind. Everybody was in the mid-teens, right? But they really haven't gone anywhere. They're still sitting in the mid-teens, even like halfway through this half. So it's not looking too solid for them at all. Cloud9, though, definitely turning it around. And now we get to see Guardian with the AWP. And there's the shot, and there's the tag. Sean Gare is down to 35. So Guardian definitely has his eye in still. It's not over yet, as far as Navi are concerned. They are battling. They want to close this out 2-0. Cloud9 expecting the early rush onto B. This is very interesting. Putting three players on B early like that. They were expecting some kind of uh, shenanigan play coming out from Navi. Well, I think Navi have, um, they have been fairly heavy towards the B bomb site, so maybe it's not such a bad call. Question is if they can switch it up and actually get the opening here. As you said, they've got Guardian with the AWP, so if he can win one fight against Skadoodle, that'll leave Shroud alone in the pit and a kind of a tricky retake for uh, Cloud9 on the A bomb site, so. Skadoodle's job right here is to get a kill on anyone crossing, but if he fails it, it's much better for him to fall back and try and, you know, team up with Shroud back there and just stay alive and make sure that all Na'Vi have control of his short. Now that's exactly it. And now he's kind of committed to A slope, and he needs to find Guardian. He, he's, here. he's right on the edge, and there it is. Gets the flick. 
Second man out, though, Zeus is going to follow up. Wipe out Skadoodle, and the bomb is going to get planted on this A site with four players alive for Na'Vi. Only three here for Cloud9, and Sean Garris has been tagged, as we saw earlier on, by Guardian, so he's low. Oh, look at that. HE Molotov combo almost drops Zeus, and nothing is there to pick it up. Flamey spraying down one, which is a very important kill there. It's going to be finally the fire dropping Zeus, and now it's a 2v2. They're going to move the boost here. Freakasoy being boosted up, but he gets caught mid-boost, and now... Sean, there's not a lot that he can do from this position. He's sort of trapped in a crossfire, and he's going to run away, and I think that's definitely the smart play here. That was actually very close to being around for Cloud9. Seized as well. Zeus was not far away from being denied the plant actually going through. Because of the, because of the HE follow-up, he nearly got killed by the Molotov. He did? Yeah, but that was a little bit later. Oh, First yeah. time, when he was putting down the bomb, he almost got, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, got yeah. caught by it. That was scary. But I mean, Cloud9 at least succeed in getting uh, three kills on Na'Vi, which means even if, as they win this round, you can tell their economy is pretty much still shattered. And Cloud9, on the other hand, they can afford to buy this round and the next one if they need to. Yeah, exactly. And then the round bonus is going to start kicking in, and Guardian just hitting that time, barely spying that man. That's all reflex right there. Got a nice nade onto Edward. He's going to drop him low, actually. Down around 60 HP. And Cloud9, this time around, they're going back to what's worked so far in this half. 2-1-2 setup. Rather than going for the retake A, which was the initial idea in that last round. They put Freakazoid back in mid, and they start focusing up on long again. Shroud holding pit. Really hasn't seen too much action, Shroud. I'm feeling like he's starting to fall asleep over oh. there. Look at that. Oops. Smoke missed because Guardian wanted to get up on the box and couldn't wait his turn there. It's a bit of a tricky situation. They got more smokes, but you know they might want to use them somewhere else, especially if you're going to go for an A push like this. It'd be great if you can block off the incoming CTs trying to retake with smokes. and. We'll see if that's going to somehow make a difference. We'll count and see if Edward is, uh, or sorry, if Seast is going to need that smoke later on. There's the smoke for mid. We'll see if they can wedge anyone out, force anyone to a peak. I think that's what they want. You can see them up on catwalk. You can see them already long. They're hoping that this action middle is going to inspire someone else from Cloud9, somewhere else on the map, to go in and look for, for what's happening here. And Edward is really trying to sell it, but he is kind of alone. It's not the best sell, but getting a kill on Freakasoid. That's going to be much better. And Shroud will get the one, get the double as they push out long. And Skadoodle picking up Guardian and taking out Seus as well. This is brilliant. Cloud9, they might be able to do it here. This is going to reset the Na'Vi economy and a triple kill here. And that's, I mean, Shroud is basically the key to that round right there. Him getting both kills allows for Skadoodle to not have to worry about getting flanked from long. Doesn't allow for the defense to crumble. Instead, he just allow Skadoodle to focus on Cat, land the shots, and just pick Na'Vi apart. I was saying that Trout might be feeling a little bored over there. <laughs> well, there you go. He got his action, and when, it's, when the time came, he stood up and he did what he had to do. Now, I mean, actually, I mean, so, I mean... I'm just kind of surprised that they're going for a pause right now. What is this? Because this is, this is actually helping Na'Vi. You don't want to give them a second time out. Well, I'm, it could be a, te a technical thing, couldn't it? It could be just a... Uh... It could, knock on wood. Yeah, we lost a player, <laughs> right? That's right. Okay, so we lost a player, apparently. One of them dropped out. And that's, this is actually really bad for Cloud9. It, you don't want to give Zeus yeah, yeah, it's true. time to it's, figure things it's out. It definitely will, but I mean, that happens. There's not a lot we can do about that. Um, I do want to give some credit to Shroud, though. I mean, that double kill in, in itself is good. It's really important. But what we've got to give him credit for is staying put as long as he did. Because once Flamey picked up the kill on, on Freakasoid in the middle, that's going to give him a lot of uh, motivation to try and move out of his position. And if he's running as they're pushing long, then th that's what they were hoping for. That's what they wanted. Instead, he was right on time and didn't move an inch, and uh, that allowed him to get the double kill. So, yeah, well played on Shroud there. So, so close. Skadoodle might have hit that shot midair. Well, look at Na'Vi's economy. I mean, they've, they've forced up here, but it's not that impressive, and he almost hits that shot. Skadoodle wants to go for more. And it's going to fall back a little bit here. Doesn't want to give anything away. And that's, I think, the, that's the key right now. Just play in groups and make sure Na'Vi don't, are not allowed to steal any rifles or anything like that. Well, at least they know where Freakazoid... Where, I mean, they, what's important is that they know where Skadoodle's playing from now. So it's going to be Freakazoid taking his spot over here on A slope. Nades just sailing in, but a good anti-flash to slow things down for Na'Vi. And a Molotov as well, but Zeus charging out all along. Trying to use the smoke to his advantage. He's going to go for that spray fight. And he nearly drops Shroud down to half HP. And Freakazoid is there to save the day. Edward, though... It's all he's going to get. Na'Vi are getting slammed to a stop. It's Guardian and Tiger. They're the last two alive. And Edward is what I mean. Uh, Guardian 25 health and Edward on just uh, 98 and 45 seconds left. There's no way in at this point here. Bomb is trapped. 
And um, they're trying to see if they can inch their way forward, but Freakazoid has the help to fight this. Should be able to take our Guardian out very easily indeed. And there's the shot. Edward, last man, gonna go down. Freakazoid with a triple, and it's 14 to 12. And the local crowd here, they're absolutely loving this. They want to see that third map as well. And it's looking really likely, because look at this. Navi now have no more money left. It's, it's a really hard decision for Navi. Either you force up now, cross your fingers, and hope you can get the job done with Tech Nines, or you hard eco and save for the last round, and it is going to be the buy. Navi, a little bit delayed, but they are going to take it. And Guardian gets the headshot on Freakazoid with the scout. Oh, that's... Saw, though. That's so dirty. He hit Shroud and Skadoodle as well, but... The aggressive push top mid is still working out fairly well here. They're a man up. Shroud coming back into it. He gets down by Seize, though. Nice shot with the Tech Nine. And uh, 3v3 here. This is the sort of round that Cloud9 can't possibly afford to lose. And Skadoodle gonna go down. It's nothing in Sean Gares left. If they lose this, it might burst the Cloud9 bubble here. Yeah. This, I mean, they're gonna be having flashbacks the last weekend in the Grand Finals versus Fnatic. Yeah. I, that's, that's definitely what's weighing on them right now, so nothing in Sean Gares. They're sticking together, they're going as a pack, and Seized gonna fall to Sean Gares, so a strong start. But Edward and Zeus still alive. And with 50 seconds left, they could be anywhere on this map right now. Cloud9 still trying to figure it out. Is it B, is it A? Well, turns out it is, and they don't even put a smoke down. Edward just takes the fight straight up, wins it, and Edward with the double kill at range. Ooh. I mean... The plus is that they've got so much money. 13,000 on Shroud. He can easily drop for nothing here. But mentally, this is a big blow to Cloud9. If they lose this upcoming round, if they are forced to eco at any point here, that's going to be very tricky. They still have money for, for another one. But if now we win this and the next one, I don't know. This would be a, a completely devastating loss to Cloud9. Unacceptable as what? I mean, it is actually a skill in itself to close out games. Like, that's something that as a team you have to work on and build to. And it's sort of like a, you know, a collective team mentality. If, you, if people start to get a little bit loose towards the end as you know you're winning, if you feel like we've got this, and then suddenly you let go a little bit, you can't do that. You've got to keep the focus all the way to the end. And right now, I mean, you brought up the Fnatic thing. It, it feels like maybe Cloud9, they just need a, a little bit of work on, on that last uh, bit there. Yeah, no, it's... Uh you was a Dane, Anders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a team in recent memory. They had a lot of trouble with this. Speaking from experience here, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I've, I've seen the salt. But then we saw it. Once they actually won the finals, the, the floodgates opened. And they were able to continue to close them. It's a mental block. And so Cloud9 right now, they just need to get two rounds to keep their hopes alive and take this map to overpass. Should be doable. Navi very slow and careful this round, though. Zeus moving up Catwalk, and the bomb is making its way up there as well. Looks like they want to execute Skadoodles here with the AWP. Now would be a good time to show that American AWP off here. He's ready and waiting. Smokes are out. Flashbangs to follow. He misses the first shot and falls back to a new angle, and he goes down to Flamey. Great kill here from the Russian player now. Freakasoy trying to push up, but no bomb plant yet. Ten seconds here. Where's that bomb coming in? Edward finally getting it. 30 health left. If he goes down, the round is done, but he's going to punch in the numbers, and he's going to get it as well, and nothing. He's going to drop to Edward, and that's going to equalize the score. 14-14. Quad kill on Flamey, and we're moving into the 29th round, and everyone on Cloud9 can buy except for nothing, but they should buy. There's no point in saving. Might as well go for it here. Yeah, you have to do it now. Backs it to the wall. You cannot let Na'Vi get ahead of you here. It's pretty much going to be a tombstone story. And no, oh, no, Flamey through the wall, taking out Skadoodle. Yeah, that double up set up on, uh, on Navi's side. They both tagged him, and Flamey got the, ki the killing blow there. That is devastating. What a way to start. If Cloud9 lose this round, they'll have no money for the 30th round, and they could end up losing 16 14, and that would be yeah, heartbreaking. To say the least. And Navi, they're just going to keep rinse and repeat. Skadoodle's gone. Who do they have to deal with now? Sean Gares with the op. The Freakazoid is trying to hold the line over here on A slope. He's going to get up into Goose. He had success in this position last time, so we'll see if he can reproduce that. Navi, all five members. There's no subtlety here. All five members are just going to go barreling up, and now it's going to come down to whether Cloud9 can hold the line or not. Smoke goes down to block things off, and now Navi rush around the corner. Double spray for Freakazoid. That's the start. The pop flash as well to slow things down further. Nothing will bring it back, and nothing with a double kill of his own. It's going to be down to Guardian now. 1v3. 45 seconds left, and he needs to get this kill. Oh, he's sneaking up here, but Freakasoy will get it. The triple, 
Very nicely played there, and that's going to be map point for Cloud9. They may still bring it back. Navi really don't have a lot of money here. They can buy two AKs, and that's pretty much it. And actually, yeah, one of them is... Oh, they have a little bit more. So an AWP for Guardian, and an AK and two Galils is the mix they're going to go for instead. So trying to spread out that money a little bit. And let's see if Guardian can do it one more time. Not going to happen. Going to get the tag on Sean, but not the kill at least. And that kind oh of situation, God. right? And that kind of situation to come back, being a man down at the beginning of the round. Freakazoid once again doing work for Cloud9. I don't know if you guys can tell, but, but it was really obvious that Freakazoid was fighting himself to try and not peek in that situation. He got the two kills, and he's going to get another one here, taking down Seized. He's really doing a lot of work for Cloud9 here at the final stages of this game. But Flamey will drop him eventually, and it's going to be back into a 4v4. Skadoodle with that AWP last time. He fell quickly. And that was Flamey to get the shot. We'll see if Flamey can do it again. Skadoodle is on the other side here, and he's going to take him out. So a bit of revenge going for another one. He's going to go down to Guardian. And now Edward trying to see if he can get the spray here. Shroud buying time with the counter flash as well. But it looks like it's going to be a bomb plant here for the CIS team. It's a 3v3, and they are gunning for that A bomb site. Shroud looking for a headshot. He drops Zeus and the bomb as well. Sprays down Guardian. Edward going to be alone, and it's already been called. GG Edward making his way up through T spawn or CT spawn at the moment in a 1v3 with 30 seconds left. And Cloud9. What a long map this has been for them, but Overpass is up next. Trout, he's got the double, he's gonna get the triple. There it is. A look at Freakasoid. Absolutely fired up. And there's the hurdle out of the way, but yeah, there's gonna be a big sigh of relief. That for was Cloud9. A and the entire fan base here, the crowd just goes wild. Every frag at the end there for Cloud9, the whole place is blowing up. Yeah, every time a kill happens, they're yeah, and every time someone's like, oh, so yeah. it's just like a roller coaster of emotions in the venue right now. I can't believe it. That, that was a very, very tough game for Cloud9. Uh, this is just an excellent finals, and was, this is what we were hoping for. It was, a, it was looking pretty grim there to start on Inferno, but Cloud9, they gave us a show. 30 rounds, it went the distance on the second map, and now it's going to be overpass to close this out. This is a best of three finals, not a best of five, so this last map will decide it all. Yeah, and overpass them at the Navi play very well. Cloud9, they've shown some promise on it, but they're going to have to bring their absolute A game here. This is ideal. Yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting, but we're going to go to a commercial break before we do it, so stay with us, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, from that short break. We're about to get into the final map. This is it, the final map of the ESWC tournament yeah. here live from Montreal. The grand finals are about to be decided on overpass between Cloud9 and Navi. Cloud9, I mean, we're both saying over here, if Cloud9 don't put up a fight here on Overpass, maybe they lose, but if they don't put up a fight, we're both gonna be heartbroken. Because yeah. after that struggle on Dust2 going 30 rounds and clinching it, they can't just get rolled. Yeah, it's hard to know how that's gonna feel. I mean, it... <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, that's the, that's the best thing I've ever seen. He's got, he's, well, he's ice cold, you literally. You know, nothing is like a big fan of the Joe Rogan podcast, right? And Joe Rogan's been going wild about this, this it's like ice therapy or something. See, there you go, nothing. That's it, meditation. Well, let's not interrupt him. Let's just he's just trying to cool down, down, man. He's too hot, he's too hot. Let's try and keep our voices down a little bit. I did not, not, not interrupt him. Don't want to, you know, he's not got his headset on. Just keep it a little bit zen for a moment here. I, I like that idea. All right, all right. Just, um, you know, listen to the, the beat of your own heart and uh, take a deep breath and feel yourself just getting ready to clutch. <laughs> I fall asleep to your voice? I mean, how do you think I fall asleep in hotel rooms, people? Listen to that voice right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, honestly, though, I mean, why not? It, 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 so I, I actually, I, sometimes I get very bad headaches, and I, I sometimes put my head on the tab and just put, like, cold water on my head, and it actually works. So I don't know if jo Jordan's having a headache right now, but um, either way, you got to hope he's ready to clutch because they need him. They need the whole team here. It's Cloud9 versus Na'Vi, and it's the grand finals of ESWC 2015, so let's get it on. And looks like we will be joining the knife round this time to see who starts on what side. And that could actually be very important here. Good start for Cloud9, a quick AWP on Skadoodle, and everybody getting fully equipped on Cloud9. I think that's what they need. I'd say now be your favorites to win this map, but I don't know. Maybe they can bring it out here at the end. Uh, Navi, I mean, they've pretty much been clear favorites to win the entire thing, so... Cloud9 still the underdogs, even on the home turf, even with the crowd behind them. They have a lot of work ahead of them here if they want to upset Navi in this. So Navi will get to choose which side they want to start on, and of course they're going to swap over to the CT side. This is still a CT-sided map, so they're not going to go for any kind of shenanigans here. 
Uh, message swap. I guess you should write swap. And there we go. Yeah, there's the swap coming through. Badam. And Navi instantly readying up. They are good to go. So we'll see if Cloud9 can uh, pull out something interesting here. The pistol round on the terrorist side. Um, a very common strat these days. We've seen a bunch of times there's one person pushing into playground with a flashbang. The other four members of the team pushing into connector and running up towards the restrooms. And then the one flashbang goes over the hedge that's up there. And then you just, uh, you're, you're right up there and, and maybe you're taking a close fight with a bunch of people who just have USPS and you have Glocks. So that's generally what you want. I feel like we've seen that that particular pistol round maybe already two or three times in, the, in this one tournament. And I know TSM did it a couple of times as well. I'm not even sure. It might even have been them that sort of came up with it first. Um, so it's just become very popular anyway. And um, that could definitely be an idea here for Cloud9. Or they could try and completely reinvent themselves. What we don't see a lot anymore are people rushing like straight into B. If you go B, they end up doing it rather slowly and trying to see if they can maybe get a, an early fight with someone from a little bit of range. No, it's good that you point up that mid strat, basically. The fact that they go in through connector quick, uh, that, that does seem to be like the big strat to go for on your pistol side right now. But that's something that Sean Gares will take into account. And so he's going to try and pull a fast one here on Zeus. And we're going to see who comes out ahead now. The two in-game leaders, they're battling out. It's the game of chess. Who's going to actually make the right call? I mean, if we see just one guy with grenades here and everyone else with armor, I'd say there's a decent chance it could happen. Sean has the one HE. Are we going to see a little bit more? He must have bought a uh, Tech-9 as well yep. for Shroud. So uh, no flashbangs currently picked up. Could then, I would say, it's likely it's something else. And you can see them all running towards the B-bomb side. Are they going to actually just run straight in? That's very uncommon if they do that. Not anymore. Flamey going to go for a fight and an instant pick off there. Aichi is down. Freakasoid wants to avenge his fallen leader, but he gets flashed out of it. And Flamey trying to fall back behind the barrels here, looking for another headshot. He's going to get it. Has time to reload. Grenade going to touch him up, but Flamey's not done. Oh, finally, they take him down. Shroud with the Tech-9. But is it too late? He gets a double and the bomb is going to go down. Guardian trying to come up from behind. Shroud trying to defend his teammates as the bomb has been planted. It's still a 3v3. And now they're going to have to go for the retake now. They've got the kit, but Guardian is falling out. Seized has the kit here. He's very low on health and he drops. Nothing picking up a double kill. And Cloud9, they win that round in a very unlikely manner. I thought for sure they were going to lose it. Yeah, Shroud for me is the hero. Shroud is the hero of that yeah. round. Getting the kills, but more importantly, getting the information. Spots Guardian on short, spots the man at Monster, gets all these so that his teammates aren't walking out into easy shots for Na'Vi. They get, to, they get coordinated, they get the information, and they play off without. Shroud, just huge pistol round for him. And losing, losing Sean early on, not the biggest deal, because he only had an HE, and then no Kevlar, nothing really to work with. Did Jordan just stop the train with a decoy? I oh. think he did. Shroud oh. there with a big opening frag on Flamey, but Seuss is going to get overrun as well. He gets a kill, but goes down to Freakasoid, and... Uh, just a free, uh, a free bomb site here, but I, th I think Jordan just stopped the, uh, the train with the decoy because you can do that. Someone was putting yeah, that can. on Reddit. Um, very interesting. He picked that up quickly then. Ooh. <laughs> Can't help myself. Like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Guardian. <laughs> Calm down, you beast. <laughs> he's hitting shots, man, and he's going to back off. I think now it's basically back off, hold on to the Kevlar helmet. And Edward thinking to hold on to that MAC-10, which makes perfect sense as well. If he gets an exit with a MAC-10, that's great. That's so much money for him to work with, and he's going to take down nothing. Very, very important. That's uh, $600 right there, but <laughs> Scandoodle is going to leg him, and he was already low. And uh, Guardian will live through that round, no problem at all. But they do, they do what they need to here, actually, Navi. They get three kills out of that. So solid work getting Cloud9 to spend the money, even if they are kind of going halvesies with the SMGs, etc. They still have to re-up on the nades on the Kevlar. But this is, this is the start that Cloud9 needed desperately here on Overpass. They couldn't have a repeat of Inferno where, sure, they win the pistol, but then Na'Vi come back, and then Na'Vi have got them in this perpetual stranglehold that just keeps tightening. Now Cloud9 now have some room to work with. But Na'Vi, pretty much hard eco from them. P250 picked up on Edward, but that's basically because of that MAC-10 kill. And then they stack B, expecting Cloud9 to rush through here, but no, Cloud9, they're elsewhere on the map. And this goes back to the other metagame change that we've been talking about. It feels like now, whenever you feel like the CT sign is going to be ecoing, you want to push long, and pretty much with the whole team. So I'm, I'm not, it's okay that they leave Sean behind, because he got a MAC-10, even if he gives it up, it's not such a big deal. But the rest of the team grouping up, pushing long, because it's much easier to take a fight against USPS at this range here. They're going to be just fine, pushing into the bomb site, And there is Flamey with a return, but otherwise, it's looking decent enough here for Cloud9. They lost uh, one of the MAC-10s, and as long as they can pick up a couple of P90s here at the end of the round, it's not going to be the end of the world either. So actually, Edward gets a kill, so now it is getting a little bit too expensive here for Cloud9. They should still win the round. No kits on Na'Vi and no armor either, but yeah, I, Na'Vi getting a lot out of this round, maybe more than they should. Definitely. I mean, these kills are going to add up. And there you go, nothing just zones in, taking out Edward.
Clever stuff there, getting a read on his, on his opponent's position. But yeah, they're spending way more money than they should be right now. Skadoodle's going to have to upgrade for an AWP here. There's, is, is he going to pull a Guardian and hold on to that scout? Yeah, you, no, okay, there it is. I was about to say, you know, Skadoodle, you're still a sane man. But uh, they, they're spending so much more money that they're, they're really going to be in, at risk of ecoing if they lose this round. Flamey, is he going to go for the peak? Look how fast they are there. Molotov bounces the wrong way, and that's going to create an opening. That, he wanted that to go into Monster and not actually on the outside, and that's a big risk now. Seuss is going to go down. Look how quick they are. That failed. Molotov allowed them to get so quickly in here. Flamey is going to be dropped, and one tiny mistake. A couple of pixels to the left, and he would have had it. Instead, it hits the wall, and Na'Vi going to have to give up the round immediately. This is a huge win for Cloud9. Four rounds, and really, they could actually go out and start hunting. Send Sean Gares out there. Send nothing out there. Just get a rifle off of Na'Vi. If you can find Guardian, even better. But right now, Na'Vi have taken up pretty solid positions to hold on to their guns. So it's going to be a bit tough for Cloud9. And they might just elect to hold on to their own stuff and start building a bank. So still a valid play here for Cloud9. But you're absolutely right, Anders. That Molotov, it makes all of the difference. In Cloud9, they were wise. They did not let the opportunity pass. They just pounced. So 4-0 lead now for Cloud9, and we go into the next round here. Na'Vi, they're going to be able to get a buy out of this. They can drop some FAMASs for their teammates, so everybody's going to get a full one here. But Cloud9, they maintain that pressure. Yeah, very, very cool stuff. And I'm kind of impressed and also a bit uh, intrigued by the fact that Cloud9 are getting so many of these rounds to work at the B bomb site by just walking into B. Normally, we've seen a lot of hits towards A, but if you do go B, you generally tend to try and do some clever boosts outside where the sewer is and try and see if you can look over the wall. Seized, jumping to look over the smoke, and he's got to be careful he doesn't get uh, caught as he's trying to fall back in towards the restrooms. But I like this from Navi as well, trying to be aggressive and put a little bit of a slowdown on, uh, on um, Cloud9 here. It's a good idea. And once again, Cloud9 just taking over long. All five members as well, just really pushing here, making sure that they can't get overlap, making sure that they can't... Well, you know, if ever you're going to trade one for one, this would be it, right? Yeah. So they want to just explode out onto the site. And right now, Navi trying to set it up. Seized couldn't be getting boost. No, he's going to boost Guardian instead. No, rather he's boosting Edward. Oh, but there's nobody covering long right now. Cloud9 are getting very close. This could be a disaster for Navi. Cloud9 are moving up here. They need to react to this. And right around the corner, the tower is there, but they're both going to get knocked down. And now Flamey and Seuss are left. They can't do a thing. They have to run away. They can't possibly even dream of retaking this. That was gold for Cloud9. Two people on top of each other like that is great if you're looking over smoke or looking over that sign right there. Not great if you're fighting five members of Cloud9 who are coming in on the other side. And there's Skadoodle covering the rear, taking out Susan. Flamey, the last man alive here. This is an absolutely stunning start for Cloud9. Nothing like what I was expecting. Just brute force tactics, essentially. All five there means that even if Guardian opens up strong, taking out one pick, he instantly gets traded. It's just the trade mechanic. That's how it's supposed to work. And now Cloud9, they know where Flamey's playing from. No, not fast enough. Shroud, no, he gets for the repeak. Flamey goes back out into the open and loses his gun. Shroud gets that kill, and now it's a very awkward spot. Navi, they just have the money to go for the buy. Edward drops that AWP for Guardian, and so he will be... He, he will just have the Kevlar. There it is. But no nades. Look at how light they are on nades. Not a single kit either. This is a downward slope for Navi. Unless they can come up big here and just win flat out in the aim duels. They're not going to have any utility to help them retake a site. Wow, it's, it's too close to call it here, but it's starting to look like a bit of a meltdown for Na'Vi here. They're really not uh, getting into some good positions, although finally Guardian comes up with a quick kill there on Freakazoid, and now they can afford to play even more defensively if they need to. Sean Gares moving up into Connector, but you can see how far back on the map they're already putting themselves. I'm not sure why Seuss is hanging around here. I would say that's a bit of risk. I'd much rather see him grouped up on the B-bomb site with Flamey. Sean trying to see if he can get a quick peek at somebody here, but I think they heard the door opening and Flamey just confirms that nobody's moved out yet. And he spots the one man and an attempted wall bang there, but no joy. But Navi, they literally have a single flash. So when Cloud9 starts to come and knocking on a site, it's going to get real difficult here for Navi to hold. And now Sean Gare is starting to peek towards mid. Navi have consolidated. They're still holding a little bit out. Edward. On the angle, he might be able to catch Sean Gares with an 8 in his hand. This could be big. Edward, is he going to get that free kill? Yes, he will. Very well done on him. 5v3 and 30 seconds left. This shouldn't be doable for, uh, for Cloud9. Wondering if they're going to try and do it quick here or just move back and save what they've got for another round because 
kind of need to make up their minds right now. Otherwise, it's going to be too late no matter what. Nothing going to go down. And Shroud and Skadoodle, not sure they should be trying to push this. They could just try and save, but yeah, I think the call finally came through then. Ten seconds left on the round. So five and one, nicely handled round from Na'Vi, just picking up a couple of kills here in the beginning and then going for the defensive route. And it's Skadoodle, one HP, but they're not willing to peek. This is also wise on Na'Vi's part. Every gun is so valuable for Na'Vi. Yeah. Now they can hold on to it. Now they don't have to drop for anybody. They'll get full nades, incendiary grenades, kits once again. So also good on Na'Vi for not hunting too much because they know that Cloud9 have the money to buy for days right now, or at least to rebuy that AWP for Skadoodle if they were to get it off of him. So good control, good self-control really by Na'Vi. And now we get to see how they decide to, uh, to answer Cloud9. And how does Sean Garris change it up? Because once again, they're going top mid. They're going to get into playground. And are they going to start looking towards long once again? Because Na'Vi... Hmm. Na'Vi haven't put much emphasis here. Usually you see Guardian actually turn that into a bit of a, a playground for himself. That's just not the case right now. Yeah, You've got to wonder if that's a lack of confidence or if the team as a whole just isn't, you know, isn't up to it. Be gr I think it would be really help them if Guardian could take a fight early on over here and just, you know, get a pick off and run back. And if you've got a, a teammate with him to be a bodyguard, I, I still think that's a smarter choice than falling all the way back in the bombsite like this. Cloudline have three smokes and a Molotov as well, so they can, they can definitely execute quite heavily onto this bombsite if they get in position. And you can kind of tell that that's what they want to do right now. Edward is in a position where he's going to get smoked off. Guardian very likely going to get smoked off where he is. And playing by the truck is seized, and that's a common smoke spot as well. So three smokes, three positions that almost always get hit. And flashbangs are in early. Seized, not going to get smoked, just going to get downed. And Guardians are full next. Look at the timing here for Cloud9. Nothing taking down Edward as well. And there's a Flamian suits are left, but they're in a 2v4. And it's not going to work out. Triple kill for nothing. My god, this is looking so good. 6 to 1 and nothing on 10 kills at the moment. You know, I'm not sure there's much, you know, stock trade in, in ice bags, but if there is, it's time to buy some, because, I mean, this might become a very popular trend for pro gamers. I can see it, you know, nothing just making that a requirement at every LAN. You have to have just this much ice. I can only balance this much. But the big thing here is that Navi allowed, for, they played so careful, almost scared, that they allowed for Cloud9 to get right up on the site. And yeah, it's going to be a quick execute over to the B side here. Cloud9 not wasting any time, but they know that Navi Seems like they have a pretty good read on it. It's going to be a stack, but Navi have the pistols, and Freakazoid wow. takes point, finds the headshot on Seized. Flamey looking for an angle, trying to go through the smoke. Not going to hit anything at all. Song Gares annihilates him, and it's going to be Zeus now at the CZ-75, holding close on short, but he is last man standing here for Navi. And so, expected outcome here. Cloud9 managing to just power through onto that site. The big thing here now is going to be whether Navi decide to go aggressive in the next buy round, or if they continue to try and play passive, because if Cloud9 get all the space in the world to just walk up onto a site, and they're hitting headshots like this, what do you do to stop that? Cause being called yeah. here by C, so they, they're going to have a similar discussion as we were just talking about. How do, we, how do we end this? How do we stop the pain here? Someone quickly go and register the domain esportsice.com and, you know, just, just make sure you get in on that business right there. Oh, dude, there's so many different ways to go with that. I, I, I think it'll blow up in the COD scene for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> there's, so many, there's so many, you know, really good sales points to, like, keep a cool head, you know? So many, so many taglines like that you could put on the product. Yeah, how to stay sharp. <laughs> it's good because all you're selling people is, you know, really, really cold water, and you know that must feel good. Yeah, and that's the key to focus, right? Yeah, one ice bag, fifty dollars, right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> good price. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ninth, oh. ninth round is going to be the next one, and you can already tell that Guardians has uh, has been picking up that AWP there, but um. Yeah, heavy discussion going on here on, well, actually, it doesn't look that heavy, but everyone's just kind of, I don't know, listening to Starix, obviously, talking in the background, but Sue's not saying anything. Everyone looking very frustrated at the moment. Yeah, no, I mean, look at that, actually. They're all quiet. What is this? They're pondering life, existence? What, is it, what does it mean? I mean, right now, Sean Garris is not going to be wasting any time. As we can see, they are already having the discourse yeah. there, just basically going over what needs to happen, and Stunna also focusing on what's important. But uh, yeah, Cloud9, they have, got, they have got this match in their hands at this point. Seven rounds on T-side, plenty more rounds to play in the half. This is in their hands. I mean, you know, I definitely don't want to jinx this, but we've been here before, haven't we? Where it looks so know, right? good for Cloud9. Yeah, yeah, knocking on, I don't think this is wood, but whatever it is. It's a, it's a wood laminate. <laughs> knock, on, knock on wood laminate. It's not quite as effective. And looks well, like we got to give Navi a chance, right? I mean, 
it almost feels like Cloud9's decision was to say, okay, they're going to try and change something, but you know, we'll just do what we've been, what's been working already. And Guardian holding long. There's a man in mid. There you go. That's how Navi are starting to change it up. They're saying we're giving up way too much control. Edward holding restrooms yeah. like this, and Guardian finally in position on long to stop Cloud9 from just walking up there for free. So these are the adjustments right there made by Navi. Cloud9, though, they aren't falling for it. They've got two guys in link, two guys towards B. Curious to see how they decide to play it out from here, if they, to, if they commit or if they're going to start looking to, to start getting map control in mid. Problem is, if they go up connector and get close to Edward, he's got an MP7, not really the best weapon for it. Spray through from Seized, and that could have definitely connected a lot more. It did drop Sean fairly low, but he's now setting up for a couple of grenades here, also doing a little bit of damage onto Shroud. Grenade in the back there, gonna at least force that position from Flamey, and he gets a follow-up, but look at that. Edward coming in from the back and taking out Shroud, so pretty good kill. Sean will return. And that's still an AK for an MP7, so I think Navi are gonna be okay with that trade. Especially as Sean is also very low on health here. But look at the time. 25 seconds as they're running long. They're going to have to just get in here and don't stop. If they can win the fight against Guardian, they might have a chance. But they need to be so quick about it. If he gets one kill on the guy carrying the bomb, this round is probably over. 10 seconds. 9 seconds. And Skadoodle going down. Nothing has the bomb. He's punching in those numbers. And he is going to be all alone in a 1v3. Very tough position. And now he should be able to get this back into a 2-7 scenario. Nothing trying to hide in the back, but Flamey will catch him, and it's a team ace. Every member of Na'Vi picking up around, making it 7-2, so good job on their part. And so, um, uh, I mean, you saw what the power is of denying all their map control. And Lightning doesn't strike twice, I guess, or doesn't strike, doesn't strike the same place twice. I was wondering, 1v3 clutch for nothing again, yeah. like what we had versus Envy? I mean, that just goes to show how difficult it is to do what nothing did earlier on train. But, yeah, Na'Vi... They get into restroom. Edward also pushing into connector, catching a free kill there. Guardian challenging. Her. I mean, it's just basically Cloud9 trying to take into account that Navi are going to go aggressive, but that slowed down their game to the point where they had no more time. So now I'm wondering if they're going to try and go for a bit more, uh, bit more of a turn of speed here, because once again, Guardian. And, I mean, once again, they go right back to that same setup. Cloud9 didn't actually spot Guardian long early either, so the element of surprise is still there. Flamey has another AWP, so they're going for the double AWP setup. And I'm, I was going to say it, I wanted Edward to have it, but I think Flamey has the AWP because of his position down in yep. B. I think it's not a question of who's necessarily better with it, but it's a question of who's normally holding that B spot. Guardian with a great shot there, and that's all they needed. One kill on Shroud, and now they can play so much more defensively, although still trying to take a bit of a fight and skip. What? Doodle, full blind, and still with enough uh, sense to be taken out that... Uh, Aggressive push from Edward. Well, okay then, Ska. You're, uh, you're clearly on point. One for one, tip for tat. And now, four on four advantage back towards Cloud9. They still have some nades as well to make this play. But look at this. This is information gathering at its best. Seized pushing up the top mid. He's going to take Edward's spot. He's going to find Sean Gares, win that duel. And a man advantage now back for Navi. Gets that poke and starts falling back. And Skadoodle does spot the man out in bank, though. So they do have some HEs. They could just chuck them on top of Zeus's head. I'm going to see they're pushing in now. Nothing in front, but he's going to go down immediately. And Freakazoid is, or Skadoodle, sorry, very low on health here. Freakazoid going to get the kill. It is going to be a 2v1. Somehow they bring it back. Skadoodle picking up Sosa now. Flamey trying to get in. He clicks Skadoodle away. Grenade is going to do a little bit of damage onto Freak, but he's still got it. Double kill currently. He's going to look for the triple here. Walks in and Flamey somehow does not connect. He's up on the truck and now he's very low on health. 39 and Freak is hiding in the smoke and Flamey, he might not see this coming. This is a very unlikely play from Freakazoid. Smoke is about to fade as well. Bomb ticking right in front of him and Flamey trying to walk closer and he's going to get the shot. Headshot, no scope. And he's got the kit as well. Should have time for the defuse here. Going to be very close but... Yeah, there it is. Seven to three, and Navi very, very close, but they do win the round. That clutch situation, and that's, I mean, that is so huge that Flamey actually wins it because now they have the AWP for Guardian still. Would have been real close otherwise. That's not going to break Cloud9. That's just going to make them hungrier here because they know clutch situation like that nearly worked. We're just going to do it again. We're going to keep putting them in the hot seat. So 7-3 the score. Now Navi slowly but surely walking back in this half. And Cloud9 with all the money they need to go for a full buy, but this time around, it's not going to be Guardian occupying long, it's Edward going aggressive, and this could catch Skadoodle off guard. Smoke goes down, so that's actually already ringing alarm bells here. Well, it shows you at least that Cloud9 know that uh, there's something is up. You can tell that they've got two people holding in the back ready for someone to push through. Shroud and uh, Sean, oh, sorry, Skadoodle and Shroud, I think, are both uh, very close by, just trying to keep an eye on it. Actually, Shroud moving all the way up here now. 
And Edward does get in behind them into the playground. Skadoodle right next by the fountain. Wrong timing here is going to get him killed. And he doesn't get the scope on there to Edward. Really good timing here from the Ukrainian player. And now Freakasoid. Can they trap Edward back here somewhere? That's the big question. They're going to have to try. They have to deal with Edwards at some point. This is buying so much time. Edward just sitting on that rock. He's going to peek out at the perfect time. Long distance spray to take out nothing. But Sean Garris takes out Seized in turn. So the A defense does get weakened, but there's still two players alive here. Flamey going to be able to take out Sean Garris in the end. Shroud tried to push forward. He takes out Flamey immediately. Recovers that bomb. So important. Needs to win the duel versus Zeus. Had he won that duel, could have been a winnable situation there for Cloud9. But then Navi, they just tighten up the defense and take the win from there. 7-4 to four here. Na'Vi are slowly bringing it back. I mean, they did that one pause and it seems to be working out for them. They've, they've actually managed to consolidate the defense just a little bit. Um, you can clearly tell there was a decision, a, a very sort of deliberate decision on, on Cloud9's part to say, let's not waste time fighting Edward because he's just going to hide and try and stay alive for as long as he can. Better yet to just try and see if we can ignore him and go for the bomb side. Flamey gets the right Molotov this time and goes for the follow-up flashbang and then the Spray down on Shroud. Very nice teamwork. That's how it was supposed to work all those rounds ago where it failed. This time, he puts down the Molotov, teammate puts down the flashbang, and they're in for it. Yep. And perfect flash, and just like that, one kill. They do recover the AK, so Cloud9 at least have that going for them. This is going to slow down the pace for them, and as that smoke clears, follow-up smoke. Flamey, however, knows that somebody's still lurking. Whew, that looked way too <laughs> close. Thought nothing was done, though, but he's still here. And now with a minute left on this clock, Cloud9 continue to push forward. And Sean Garris dancing right there with that Tech-9, looking to find the opening. But Seized will take the fight first. He takes out nothing. Skadoodle there to return. But then the defense holds, and that could be a double. Yes, it will. Flamey locks down the main entrance. And that's a fifth round on the board now for Na'Vi. Uh, slowly bringing it back on they? Enough money to buy on three members, and maybe Skadoodle could even drop for one or just go for a straight AWP. So that's enough. Yeah, two AKs, one Galil, one AWP, and then the armor. Well, no armor, actually, just a Tech-9 uh, grenade here on Sean. Sacrificing a lot to try and help out his team with, the, with all these grenades. And you see there, Molotov into Flashbang into Peak. Mm -hmm. You can tell that that's, a, that's something that they've been drilling in here in RV. Sush, though, going to go aggressive, and Freak will get the opening frag. Grenade going to bounce right in, and it does a significant amount of damage. Almost kills him. But it's still a favor or an advantage here for Cloud9. Well, they're taking their time with it. They still have so much time. They don't need to rush behind this. And they're, I mean, you can see that. That's already what's, what's going on here for Cloud9. They start to push up long. They want more map control. They want to move it around. Shroud will get a, a shot onto Seized somehow. And I'm thinking Seized jumped and the Shroud hit that headshot. I believe it when you say it's Shroud who could actually pull that off. He's got the reactions of a god. Yeah, we're going to need to go back and look at the demo there. Edward with a very important return frag on Shroud. And now they run into Guardian, and that might be a very big mistake indeed. You know how angry he can get him. Smoke going to be up, and that's a nice way to try and zone him out of using that AWP. And now they're rushing onto the site. Sean going to get the kill. He's got no armor, and he goes down to Flamey. That aim punch, too much to handle. And now nothing gets the first spray. He's up against Guardian. He's going to go for the bomb. Can he pick it up? He sprays. He almost connects. Gonna go for it one more time, and he clutches it, nothing! He does it, ice cold! And that's gonna be another round. Eight now in the back for Cloud9. No, Anders, not ice cold, the Iceman. Yeah. That is a huge round. And that's, look at the, look at the state of the economy. This could crack it wide open. This could put Cloud9 up on 10 rounds. Navi, if they lose this round right here, they're going to be ecoing or force buying, or they're just not gonna have what they need. So this is it, the big opportunity for Cloud9 to run away with this map. And look how fast they're being this round. They're actually trying to change up the pace a little bit here, Cloud9 getting quick into Connector, trying to see if they can force Na'Vi back fast from the restrooms, and they kind of already have a couple of uh, flashbangs raining out, and see it's all the way back here. Guardian still has that AWP. But that round was obviously very big for uh, Cloud9. If they get the next one to connect it with, then it could be 10-5 here for them in the first half. And that's a lot of rounds on the T side of, uh, of Overpass. Oh, that's, that's huge. That would be a humongous lead. Already coming out ahead with eight rounds. That's solid work. 
9 6, 10 5. These are great score lines. Look at this. They're hugging the, the right hand wall just to not be spotted from the jump. And they're so close. Flamey goes down. Guardian is still in play, but Sean just going for the bomb plant. Smoke is there, but Guardian denies it. He knows the angle, and that's a big kill. Can he get a third one as well? Trying to see if he can play around the smoke. He catches Skadoodle. What a play here from Guardian, and Edward's going to finish it off there. That was a sick round. Six to eight as well. All on Guardian to pick up those three kills. And I think the part of the trouble is that if you smoke off on the bomb site now where you put down the bomb, everybody who's playing on truck now knows that angle. I think the, the key now is to actually put the smoke up closer to the truck so that you can't even see where the angle is because everything is smoked off essentially. It's the default plan, right? It's the yeah. default plan. And so that's what's going to happen. They do go for Kevlar in this last round, of course, Cloud9, 15th round, so they're going to be forcing, and Skadoodle decides to run a little bit early, get that timing, see if he can't pull a fast one on somebody, but double Molotov, he doesn't care. Flame retarded, <laughs> Flame retarded underpants, that's what he's got. Skadoodle going to get caught, however, and it's just a slaughter, complete and utter devastation as Na'Vi hold the line, nothing is here, but he's not for long. Seized with the final kill, and that's a 7-8 score line. Na'Vi, they do run it back, but Cloud9 do come out ahead in the end. Yeah, from what was a uh, 7-1 scoreline at, so at one point, we end up with an 8-7 scoreline. Still in favor of uh, Cloud9, and I think still a very good first half. They, they definitely have the lead going into the second half, but it's, um, it's still a very, very big slowdown, right? You start off at 7-1, you expect to do better than 8-7. Let's put it that way. It's true. The pressure does set in. I, I could definitely see 30 rounds out of this map as well. I could see overtime yeah. at this point. A lot of it is going to ride on this pistol, of course. Pretty much the most important round in the half. Thing is, if Na'Vi win the pistol and make it 10 to 8, and then they also win the fourth round, that's when Cloud9, I think, mentally are going to have a hard time keeping up. Na'Vi going very quick towards the speed bomb side. They've got four armors, and Shroud is going to be the first one into the pipe. Flashbang, but Guardian is there to pick him off. Nothing getting one, and going to have a chance to reload here. He's got three bullets left, and yes, he will make it out. Freakasoid is there, and Na'Vi, they're slowing down, and that's a big mistake. All of Cloud9 are coming, including nothing from behind, and he's going to get the double. Triple kill in total. The Iceman strikes again. Nine to seven here, and... I can't believe it. Whatever nothing did in the beginning, whether it was the ice on his head. It's been a long time some since Some kind of played. meditation here. This is unreal. It's been a long time since we've seen nothing play at this level. A long time. This is like 1.6 nothing. Like 1.6 fans here are like, I haven't seen nothing play like this in years. And it's so, he's been so consistent throughout the tournament. Two days running now where he's been just, it's big play after big play. And so Cloud9 now, they get the strong start in the second half as well. It will be the force buy from Na'Vi now. Tech9, armor. But a slow pace from Na'Vi. Not really trying to get aggressive, not really trying to get in too fast. They don't want to run into a trap. They're just getting that control. They're just clearing out top mid. They've got a man pushing up long now as well. That's going to be Guardian, checking the likely spots for a jump scout. Skadoodle, however, not quite over here. He is playing on the A side, of course, but he's kind of covering multiple angles as we can see now. So we'll see when he decides to actually take that peak long and if he's going to be greeted by Guardian with that P250. And yeah, I think Sean Garris was the one to spot out the player there. And Skadoodle instantly takes up that line, attempts the shot. Yeah, and Sean actually knows because he gave up a round somewhere in the, in, the, in, the, in the group stage to peaking long like this. So he should definitely know that it's not worth it to overpeak that angle. Skadoodle going to sort of try anyway. But they should just let Na'Vi get a little bit closer and then try and fight them in close range here. That's going to be just fine. They can just go for the retake if they need to, just as long as they don't lose a bunch of players early on here. Sean actually going to let Cease for the smoke, but then the grenade follow up on Flamey. Bomb is down, but Cloud9 doing a good job here, and especially Freakasoid picking up that double kill. And he goes down, Skadoodle that is, and Freak, the smoke is gone. He's going to jump, check the corner. Very important, but Sue still gets the kill. Oh no, this could turn around for them. Nothing going to get the kill, and he's in a 1v2. This is a big turnaround here. Na'Vi looking to win the round, and they will. Edward with the triple kill, and that's going to make it 8-9. What a big giveaway here. And it all starts basically from Seize running through that smoke on a Sean Gares. Yeah. Getting up close like that, managing to... I mean, that's, it's also the same thing that we saw Na'Vi doing at the beginning of the half, playing a bit too far back on the site. They didn't challenge Na'Vi at all on that map. They didn't challenge them at long. Take advantage of the, the fact you have your scout, you have rifles. Try and slow them down. Don't let them be up on your front doorstep before they actually start going onto that site. They are going to go aggressive in this round, and that's, that's fine. It's a couple of P250s, a couple of pistols, but Na'Vi having none of it. They're going to go straight out onto the B site. So Cloud9, they get the info, but it's too late by the time they can actually convert that. Shroud is gone, and the bomb site's going to be, I mean, it's going to be taken over by Na'Vi. Yeah, easy kill from Seuss, who was looking around there. 
Sean really wants to knife Zeus as he's expecting him to come out again. That's it's an interesting plan. Ends up dropping and sees with a good spray there. Taking down nothing. So nine to nine. That's gonna tie the score line here. And we're moving into the 19th round. You you were you were sort of hinting at the idea that we could be seeing all 30 rounds here. Definitely possible now that Navi made that uh, big turnaround here. Four grenades being picked up on Cloud9. And they could have gone for like for Masters, but I'm kind of glad that they save one more time here and just go for uh, for this instead. So we'll see if they guess it right. I mean, Cloud9 have done this in the past, right? Where they go for that force and it's cost them, where they don't have the HEs, the, yeah. the Molotovs, and the off for Skadoodle, or even a double op. Sean Gare's perfectly capable of opping. So I'm glad to see them willing to, to take that step back, be willing to give Navi the lead, and then make that up in the next round when they have all the gear. And with a little bit of luck, <laughs> that's kind of what they're counting on here. A little bit of luck in Cloud9. If they catch Navi running through a, through a choke, uh, throw a choke point, rather, with the HEs, they could do some tr big damage, but Navi taking all the time. Oh, wait. Bomb is making its way back through T-Spawn towards B-Site. So yeah. that's, that might, they might be greeted here. This might actually work out for Cloud9. It's a question of whether Sean Gares decides to change it up. They've been patiently waiting for so long now. It feels like they shouldn't really give it up at this point in time. Flamey going to make a bit of noise up here. Cloud9 still waiting with all those grenades. If Navi bunch up, if they group up right here, this could get interesting. Skadoodle waiting. First guy to spot them. They're running back. And yeah, Flamey sees that there's no one in A. So yeah, if they had all walked in, you guys can let your imaginations do the rest. It was an interesting idea from Cloud9, but it doesn't quite work out. And um, thanks to Flamey, really good job on him, just spotting out every, uh, well, spotting out there's no one there and realizing that everybody else has to be a B, obviously, so nothing. The last left alive here. It's a really, not that big of an investment for Cloud9 to buy, you know, $300 on each person, and they have plenty of money in this upcoming round anyway, so they're going to be fine. And it's, uh, it's Sponge who was actually sp uh, praising Navi earlier on on Twitter for being a, a systematic team, just walking through, step by step, checklist. Mid, check. Long, Check. Link, check. You know, just clear out the map, get all of the information, and then once you have it, you make the call. So Flamey's saying, nobody's on site. Check, 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 go. Yeah. Get on there, get that plant. Don't even take the risk of walking into a trap. And that's really clever by Cloud9, because if Navi aren't that thorough, they could walk into that choke point. They were, they were fixing to. Yeah. So Flamey, the hero, the, the, the hero of that round, essentially, for Navi. It definitely is possible. Well, a one-round lead here for Na'Vi. Cloud9 have uh, gone through a double save to get where they are now. AWP on Skadoodle, he's looking for the shot. He sees the jump, but I think he also got spotted himself, and he's going to quickly change his position, and I think that's a good idea. Being that forward is great if they don't know you're there, but if they know you're there and they come up connector as well, things start to get tricky. He did have nothing there, but um, still, don't want to overplay your hand here. So much is riding on this round. So we have to see whether uh, they make the correct call as well as the parts oh, of rotation is concerned. They're doing this setup again where they have Sean alone out here, and I keep saying the only way I see this working out is if they pop flash Sean into peak. If he's just here alone, I think the best he could do is get a kill, and then he goes down, and that's not worth it. Well, nothing wanna, is here. Yeah, I nothing is here flash. with the flash, and this could be it. I mean, they tried it last time, and the timing was just off. It's nothing going to hit. This Guardian is now boosted up. Nothing needs to throw that flash. Is it actually going to happen? He sees the gun barrel, and there it is. Sean Gare starts it off, loses the, the follow-up, but he does the damage to Flamey. 35 seconds left, there really isn't a lot of time for Na'Vi, and Flamey just crossing his fingers, hoping that nothing will take the peak, that hoping, hoping that nothing will overextend. But it's going to be Skadoodle now, first line of defense, spots the first man out, that's a lot of information gained for Na'Vi, and Zeus is going to rush him down. It, the rotation is coming through, but these seconds, they matter so much, and now nothing, does he take that fight, does he actually take the peak? He, he takes the fight, actually, and it's a double spray! That's how it works, and Freakazoid comes in, drops the man, nothing with the last kill. All three alive at the end of the round in Cloud9. In the key round that they saved an extra time for, they win it and tie it up at 10-10. <laughs> yeah, big plays coming out there. Now they go into a double up setup, and um, Navi, they have money to buy anyway here. I still think it's very sketchy with that setup. I, I don't like Sean being out there alone. I think the, the idea that they keep having is that nothing is going to be a, a big enough distraction down there that Sean can go out and get the kills, but it's not worked a single time yet. Every time so far, he's either died straight away or he's traded one for one. And they don't do the pop flash at all. They haven't, I don't see him done, done that pop flash a single time. So I, I really, I'm really not a big fan of it. Well, it worked, Anders. It worked. No, the follow-up defense worked. <laughs> They'd almost cost them the round that they, that they took that fight out there. Oh, Skadoodle, Sean, Double Orb is going to make them 
a lot less mobile, but if they can just get the entry frags, that's not going to matter. You can see now Flamey walking right in and taking out Shroud, who's not been having a fun time at all on overpass here. Flamey looking for a bit more and a great headshot to drop Skadoodle as well. Score is tied at 10-10, but if Navi win this round, that's going to crush the Cloud9 economy and make it very tough here for the NA team to fight at the late stages of this uh, Grand Finals. Nothing going to go down as well. That's now a quad kill for Flamey. He's almost single-handedly, or he has single-handedly Destroyed Cloud9 in this round. Sean Gares trying to push up here, but Flamey, is he going to be denied the ace? Ceased almost getting that kill here. And Sean going to try and run away. Garden wants that off as well. He's going to be closing up on long. But that is just individual performance at its finest. And Ceased will find Sean Gares, so no off save for Skadoodle. And it's as simple as a reset economy. And there we have it. Cloud9 back to 1,400 starting money. And this is just catastrophic. Because now Navi, they're going to get so close to the goal. They have bank being developed here. Flamey sitting at nearly 9,000. There's a big buffer, and they're going to be able to develop that further here, Navi, in this round. And now Cloud9 decide to go for something that we haven't really seen yet. The straight-up long rush with pistols. Well, okay then. We'll see if they can actually get some joy out of this, seeing as how Navi are putting four players at top mid. Five of them, actually. So this could get interesting here. Guardian going to take this peak. Spots the man holding close, however, but there's an effective trade. Nothing comes right back into it. A yeah, really great job here. Nothing with the double. He's going to have a bit of a chance to reload as well. Grenades raining in. Can he get a third one? Sees this there and nothing gets a triple kill. But it is maybe not enough here. Shroud in a 1v2 and this has not been Shroud's map so far. And I think the last time we saw him on overpass as well, he was struggling a bit. I think it was some of the other maps that he was carrying on, but um, I could be wrong about that. He certainly is uh, sh struggling to get into the match here. So a nice clutch. Pistols versus rifles, that definitely sparks some confidence. If he's in the right corner, and if they push in, it's winnable, it could be done. It always is, but Na'Vi, they're so clever at taking their time. 40 seconds, they start running the bomb back towards B. Figure they can double up over there. There will also be more space for them to work with, although Shroud could be trying to hold somewhere in like Sewer or even here in T-Spawn. But 25 seconds left is cutting it pretty close. They will have enough time to check the angles, though, and not get, car got get caught, basically, if Shroud was waiting around the angle. So no problem at all. Zeus just reading the situation like a book. Smoke goes down, and the free plant happens here. Shroud, I think, should be running long and picking up a rifle instead. There's no, yep. Yeah, because he's going to do that. There's no reason to try and fight you know, for a retake in, in this situation. So it's still a huge win here for Cloud9. I mean. All those kills off of just pistols, and uh, if he can save the AK as well over here somewhere, that's going to be huge. They didn't even bother to try and save there and try and throw these AKs away. Interesting. Doesn't matter, really, yeah. in the end. Well, I mean, I, th I think actually they could have definitely thrown them over the edge there, but what if you get caught? What if Shroud is close by and you're, you know, tossing AKs around or something? I think they were really worried that uh, that, that round was going to spiral out of control. So 12. <laughs> to 10 here is going to be the score line. Navi now with a two round lead, but Cloud9 doing quite heavy damage and saving the AK means they can actually go for a buy. Free. They won't have the, well, Freak could drop the orb, but then he'd have no armor. I'll take the hit, Freak. Give Skadoodle <laughs> that op. I mean, they've been doing it so far and Skadoodle is a specialist. He's one of those opposites like Guardian, basically. But then again, Skadoodle's only got eight kills as well in this game. So both him and Shroud have really been struggling. Maybe it's better. I mean, Freak has always been doing really well. So maybe it is better to invest the rifle into him. Grenades on in. Guardian looking for an opening, but won't get it. Shroud denies it and has a sick headshot to take down Flamey. That was a real peekaboo moment. And now that's actually Navi changing up. They don't really know what to do. They're like, wait a second, I didn't even see that guy. And yeah, you're right. Sean Gares pushed all the way up. And this is a sick flank. This could completely catch Navi off guard, except that look at that Guardian. Are they literally, they're expecting this. Edward zeroed in. He's a tiger after all. I have no idea how they knew that now. Nothing in a precarious situation. He's going to get the first kill there and spots the bomb as well. But Edward just flanking everybody right now, taking out nothing as well. But it is a 3v3 and Skadoodle's here on the site now would be a great time for him to step it up. Maybe not the best map so far for him, but he can make up for it if he gets a kill or two right now. Smoke goes up all across the board. He's going to try and jump up on top of it. He gets a good shot there on Seuss and out to 2v3. It's Edward and Guardian left and Skadoodle picks up a double kill. Guardian goes down, triple spray down. Skadoodle, he brings it right back when it matters in 12-11. And look at that, from eight kills up to 11. And those are huge impact frags here.
And what is Navi's answer to this now? How do they change it up? Because that's going to be the breath of fresh air in Cloud9 sails. And so now, four rifles, the op on Skadoodle, basically Cloud9 get a second chance at it. And this is looking like it's going to go to 30 rounds, Anders. This is way too close to call because every single time a team gets ahead, boom, the other team comes right back into it. They change okay. up. Look they pull this. it off. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Skadoodle pre-aiming on that spot that they were using earlier. He is so ready for it. If he had waited another couple of seconds, I bet you Edward's going to make the jump. And he's used this once, twice, and there that would have been the jump. Yep. That's got, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. At the same time, do you want to stay that exposed for that long, right? Well, you can't when there's no one holding connector, and they don't have anyone there. So if they'd had a guy in connector, he probably would have stayed there for quite a, a while longer. But um, yeah, it's, it's wise enough, I think, for him to fall back. But again, look at that. They've given up mid now because of it. They've given up long as well. Skadoodle is just looking into restroom right now, and this is a clever boost, but this is still a lot of ground that Navi are gaining. Yeah. I'm more okay with this than, than last time when, when Navi were doing this because uh -huh. at least Cloud9 have a third guy here to cover long. Yeah, so and Guardian making sure that Sean Garris isn't holding close this time around. Learned his lesson. Setting up for the smoke here towards the bank and it's going to be right in there to block out anyone who would come and help out now. The tower is going to be down over by the sign there. Sean Garris in a great position here. They're going to walk right through. He gets the one, he gets the double. No chance at all. Nothing getting a kill on Seuss as well, and this is going to equalize the score and return seized. Now in a 1v4, it's going to be 12-12, ladies and gentlemen. And Cloud9, they are showing way more mental strength than they ever did on Dust2. It looked like they were about to break every time they lost a little bit. They were looking confused and bewildered. Right now, they look like they, they can feel the, the victory, and they're gunning for it. And seized, lives through the round. If he gets caught, this is big, but he lands the headshot on nothing. And he will live through the round. $350, when you live through the round as Tisa as a terrorist without the bomb getting planted, you don't get any money at the end of that round. So it's so important if you live to hold on and stay safe and just hide. So double off set up now. Cloud9 taking, uh, taking Guardians. I was like, thank you very much, sir. And this is a big opportunity now for Cloud9 to get some confidence and to get some, some money. But there you go. Aggressive mid. Skadoodle, no fear at all. He knows the state of the economy of Navi. He goes ahead with some aggression and actually pays off for him. But that, kind of, that kind of aggressive peak is also a way of almost sort of flaunting your own confidence, just saying, we've got it, but a nice shot. Seized. Perfect spray there. Long range to take down Skadoodle. Look how aggressive he is. He's the only one with a rifle. He knows if this round is going to be a one, it's going to be by him, but good crouch there. Freakasoid not even taking any damage, and Skadoodle, oh, sorry, Sean and Freakasoid picking up another kill. It's all on Guardian, and he goes down. Triple kill for Freakasoid. And there's that round lead, 13 to 12. Wow, this is turning into a crazy match. The way, I don't know how you feel, but right now I feel like Cloud9 are winning this game a lot more than Na'Vi are. I do as well, and this, this as well, this kind of buy from Na'Vi. They feel the noose tightening. I mean, 13 rounds, if Na'Vi loses 14, and then again, Na'Vi will be forcing. If they don't get a bomb plant out of this, it's going to be huge. They don't have any nades really either. They have to rely on people just flat out winning duels versus a fully equipped Cloud9. Yeah, not going to be easy. Seized. Normally you'd be here with a Molotov or an HE to grenade exactly where Shroud is holding, but they just don't have that equipment. So maybe they could go for a boost and try and pick someone off over the actual wall. You can still do that. And maybe Seuss, is he going to come and try and see if he can boost it up here? Wouldn't be surprised if Seize is calling for it. So it looks like that's what they're about to do. And that can definitely catch out Shroud. He's in a perfect position to get killed by this, this kind of boost. Grenade, tagging up Seuss a bit. We should be trying to see if we... Yeah, Seuss, there's the, sh the boost over. And Shroud is gone, so very well played on Na'Vi. I mean, they don't have the equipment to grenade him out of there, so they're going to fight him instead. But Edward gets down by Sean. And really, are they going to do it again? Oh, this would be so cheeky. But it's not going to happen. I thought that they would go for the boost once again there. It might still happen. Zeus is still hanging around here. See, he's still in position. And there it is. Zeus right on the edge. And he gets it again twice in the same row. And it's nothing gone. And there it is. The entry by Flamey. Slaps down Freakazoid. Skadoodle and Sean Gares. They're doing work. I mean, they have to at this point. But now yeah, Sean Gares doesn't want to have anything to do with this. He's backing off on the A side trying to hold his gun. And Skadoodle is going to do the yeah. same thing. But that is insanely clever. What a play by Zeus. Usually I, you take that once, and that's the end of it, end of things. But to actually control sewers that long and go for it again? I mean, I was about to say, actually, it's very clever by Jordan to, to or to, from, from nothing to go and sit in that corner. Just because once they've cleared it out, surely they won't be... I mean, maybe they'll check it if they run into the bomb site, but they won't be doing the same boost one more time. That's very unlikely. 
So yeah, that's some next level stuff here coming out of Zeus, and that actually won on the round. No need for grenades, no need for Molotovs or anything else, just a clever boost, and the same one twice to bring it back to 13-13. Money is still there for Cloud9 though, and a bit of a pause being caused for, all right. See where this is gonna land us. All right, well, I mean, everybody's still here, so. Um, Guardian asking checking, if, it's yeah. a, if it's a technical or if it's a, it's a timeout. It's a timeout, yeah. Time so out, yeah. A, proper, a proper timeout here to discuss what uh, is going to be happening next. Well, the line is so close now between these teams. Thanks to Skadoodle and Shangri saving, they will have a solid buy in this next round. So they have that much to go off of, but this is pretty much the round where they need to win it flat out. If they do, if they do, they can close line Navi. <clears throat> Navi's still very close behind them, though, and Navi, even if they lose, because they won that last round, now they actually have a little bit of a buffer. If Cloud9 could have just won it decisively, then Navi would have had nothing to work with. It would have been awkward force buys with Tech Nines and Galils. Yeah. But now Navi actually have just a little bit more money to work with, which will, which won't make it easy for Cloud9 to close this out easy. I mean, if I, it's hard to guess at what Cloud9 are going to be throwing at us here, but something that they haven't done very much at all is trying to take very aggressive control on Connector. They've, when they've had one person there, it's just been the single. I think Jordan has been playing there a couple of times. But generally speaking, they haven't had the two, or sometimes you can go for three people in that Connector. <laughs> free swag. Oh, yes. He's actually like, throw me some free swag. So it's like the two birds, one stone. Trying to save this. Yeah, buddy. No, but um, I mean, you can have two or even three people in that connector, and that's something that, that Cloud9 haven't really been doing. If they want to throw Navi off guard, that might be a way to do it. I mean, you know, tr just trying to think back to the last 26 rounds, that hasn't happened even once. So, and Zeus, look at him. There are some, these aren't suggestions being pulled out here, Th these are commands. Oh, it's a bit going back and forth right now, but there we go. On pause. These teams are heated, and Zeus is talking quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, buddy, man. This is good. Now we get into the thick of things. 27 rounds in. 13-13, and both teams full bot. Yeah, what it looks like Cloud9 are thinking that it might be B push coming out here. because so They put three fuel there initially, but then they have the Sean Skadoodle combo up here. And this is kind of cool. As soon as Skadoodle is going to take a shot, I think Sean is just going to put out that flashbang to make sure that no one can follow up on it easily. So it's kind of almost a way of getting like a, a free attempt at a shot without risking too much. And Skadoodle is going to be falling back. He should not go for the repeat here. Ah, but Sean is doing that one play once again. He's getting up close. Does he decide to stick this or is he going to back off? I mean, he does have Skadoodle holding the line as well to help him. So Yeah, and I think that's what they're thinking. That's, like I said, when, when nothing was down there, I think what they want is for him to take the attention and then for Sean to get a bunch of kills. It just hasn't worked out that way yet. But I mean, maybe it will. It allows for Sean to hear as well into restrooms. They don't actually have to commit anybody there because he's getting a lot of information. If Navi step, if they make any noise, these kinds of jumps, like, Sean is hearing all of this. I'm still not a big fan, and Sean has been spotted out, so now they know, and he's trapped in a very strange corner. Molotov goes out, and I don't blame him. Follow-up grenade, but, I mean, Navi, if anything, are wasting a lot of time. You've got to give uh, that credit to Sean for this here. 30 seconds, but he goes down to Guardian, and Skadoodle going to be falling back. I still think that's a very weak setup. And now Skadoodle just trying to buy time. And that's a good idea because there's only 25 seconds here. Navi are running out of time. Look at the bomb. It's really far away from the bomb site. Oh, no. If they lose a round due to the time being out, that's going to be horrendous. But Skadoodle will be dropped. And they can't really stop the bomb. They don't have any grenades. So Zeus gets a free walk in. Freakazoid going to go down. And nothing in Shroud are left here. 2v4. And he can't stop it. I actually love that attempt. If he gets the kill on uh, whoever's putting the bomb down, could have been the round. But Shroud alone takes one. As many kills as he can, but it's going to be the end of it. Wow. 13-13. Oh, sorry. 14-13 here. And all not, a lot, not enough money here on Cloud9. But if they don't buy now, they're essentially fighting for overtime. And another I demonstration of Na'Vi being so clinical. Guardian, he could have very well run right past. Assumed that uh, he checked it once before, remember? So he could have assumed that Sean Garris was just going to fall off that play. But no, he takes the time, checks the angle, and doesn't get caught off guard. That changes everything for Na'Vi. So that's, that's the key moment right there in the round. And well, they're trying to do the best that they can here. Cloud9 wow. finds a pistol eco, and well, that works too. Shroud with the double. That's definitely going to slow things down here for Na'Vi. Don't push. There is no reason for them to push. And you can see Freakasol was so close to peaking that. There is absolutely no reason. They've got a 5v3. They might as well just play this one safely. They got a huge lead, even with pistols. If they try and take fights right now because they don't have armor, that's exactly what Navi want. That'd be delicious for them if that happens. 
There's still a hold. I mean, they've got a man up in connector as well. This is so close. If Navi commit to the B site, they have three people playing site right now for Cloud9. With one very easy rotation, and Sean Gare's holding on long. Lurk roll, basically gathering information, saying, I don't see anybody. Stay there. And they're going to try and go for the boost again. They do have the Molotov this time, so they can actually hard check that corner where Shroud is holding. I'm guessing that's exactly what's going to happen. Before it even lands, Shroud is gone. Great headshot from Guardian here. But coming up from behind, nothing picking up that kill. It's now a 2v4, and they're running out of time as well. 28 seconds here. It's a 2v3. Where is that bomb plan? It's not happening. It will happen. Guardian holding it down and seized. Did he stop? No, he did put it through. Now it's a 2v2. They've got almost no health. But they can still win this. There's the shot from Seized. And now Sean, one click on either player. And he's going to be able to clutch this in a 1v2. But he has to find them first. And you can tell he's looking. He's got no grenades, no kit, no armor. And Guardian is right underneath him. There's the first free kill. He's going to charge on in. Seized. Is he going to go down? He gets a headshot. Unreal play. Triple kill. And that's going to put Na'Vi at 15-13. Match and map point here. What a way to win that round. And Sean is going to be replaying that round over and over for the next 10 years. What could have been if he had clutched that for his team? It would have wrecked Na'Vi. And that would have been Cloud9 right back in this match. But now Cloud9, they need two rounds. They've done, so, they've done well so far on the CT side. They just need two more rounds to take this to overtime. Whereas Na'Vi, it's the single one. And they're going to be feeling fired up after seized clutching that. So this is it. And now Cloud9 again changing it up. They haven't gone for this 1-2 aggressive kind of play over on long either. But Navi not really showing anything, not, not really showing any aggression here early on. Patiently holding. This is very wise by Navi. They know that Cloud9 might get desperate and try and go for some kind of aggression. And so now Flamey, instead of getting caught off guard, he's kind of safe when he spots a man. I mean, once again, this is buying, this is making Navi waste a lot of time. But Sean falling back here. Guardian gonna almost peek him. That was incredibly close. Sean could have got killed as he was just trying to retreat. But you can tell now, Navi, I mean, we've got about 50 seconds left on the clock here. And they are not even halfway across the map. So Cloud9, even no kills, no damage. They've still done a lot here to, to slow down Navi. And that's why we keep saying, you know, game after game on overpass, you should be aggressive. Yep. Because it will at least uh, buy time on, on, you know, on the, on the CT side. It's the key to strong CT on overpass. That's pretty much it. But... They are going for a bit of a gamble, Cloud9. They do have three players holding up on A, but that's going to pay off with nothing taking off Flamey. Only issue is four players about to go onto the B side here for Na'Vi. And it looks like Shroud going to set up that flash. There's the peak behind it. Seized. Does manage to get up close to Pillar. Smokes are about to go down for Na'Vi as well. They're going to get some space to work with. And Freakazoid, it is imperative that he actually hits the shots. But nothing also doing some pretty good work. Takes out Seized. And this is going to be it. Now, whether Na'Vi managed to pull it off or not, this is all it's on. And nothing with the last bullet will take out Zeus. Sean Gares will walk in, but it is a quad kill for nothing in the end. And just like that, Anders, 30 rounds. We're going the distance back to back. And the money for Na'Vi is not exactly great. That bomb plant would have helped them. If they got the bomb plant, it's a near perfect buy for them. But now it's not anywhere near that. And nothing is dropping a 30 bomb as well. The meditation, the ice bag. The ice all man. All the combination, yeah, the ice man. Incredible. Sick from pretty much all throughout the day not been having a good time and you can tell every time he's on camera he looks like uh he's about to uh to meet his end but he's putting all his energy right now into winning this game or at least bringing it to overtime wow uh, this is just impressive stuff through and through a true battle for the title here and now what is the play, Navi? They decide to take over long. They're going through it once again, being systematic, clearing out restroom. They've worked their way up mid, but there's still a minute left here. It's a little bit of time to play with. Guardian trying to bait out some kind of response. Sean is holding a corner that, again, I'm not a big fan of here. He was successful with it last time, right? That's when he got that double spray down. So maybe that's what he's thinking, the reasoning behind him taking that position. It, it, he definitely was, but as I recall, a lot of teams check this corner, and especially because he already used it once. I'd say there's a decent chance now you're gonna are gonna check this. I'm not a big fan of it. Well, we'll see. They are pushing up, and he just goes for it aggressively. Sprays down two, and that's huge. Well played, Sean. Sees they're gonna be able to take him down, but then Flamey returns with a double of his own. It's a two v two, and Flamey gets a triple kill. And now it's all on Shroud here. 17 seconds, and he goes for the fight. He goes down, and now we are gonna win it. 16, 14, and you can tell the impact on Cloud9 there. Oh wow. What a game this has turned out to be. Huge legendary. victory for Na'Vi. Just legendary.
Flamey to clutch it. I mean, he had some very good rounds throughout this tournament. You can be sure, yeah. They are destroyed Cloud9. Especially after it starts so well in that round. Sean getting the double. But then they aren't able to make it work. Navi this time, they will be going for the handshakes, of course. True sportsmen both. As far as the team's wow. are concerned. But, yeah, <laughs> this is going to be a huge blow dealt to Cloud9. But at the same time, there are positives here that Cloud9 can push your team the distance. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of positive things to talk about, and maybe only a few details to correct, but um, it's not going to be this grand finals. Yeah, and already, already just breaking it down. I, nothing as well, just incredible performance there, but truly, Navi, another title for them, and it just shows how close it is at the top. Now, we have a true North American contender. <laughs> oh, yeah, that much is clear. No one can argue otherwise at this point in time. A few kinks, a few, a few things changed, and, um, and things will be better. Wow, I mean, considering how it, uh, it all started off, they brought it back on Dust2, almost managed to win it here on Overpass. Just a couple of, uh, of rounds difference. And Stunna, yeah. That's pain. But there, there's joy, right? It's just, you have one winner, you have one loser. That's the, the long and short of it. What this also does is immense the fact that Navi is also, an, a, you know, still a team that's just improving so massively that it's, uh, it's, it's really quite incredible. And I think we're going to be ready on the stage as well. So, Sadakist, take it away. What an unbelievable turn of events to go from a 16-2 in the first map. Cloud9 looked out of it again. Inferno, an obvious problem for the team, yet they wanted to ban out Mirage against Navi. And then that turn of events, how heartbreaking. Two weekends in a row that they potentially could have won a final. One versus Fnatic, one versus Na'Vi. Two of, in my opinion, the top three teams in the world right now. That's absolutely incredible. And yet, it comes down to a round which they have the man advantage and Flamey tears it away from them. That's so hard to deal with. And you could see the heartbreak. You could see the despair on Freakazoid's face. Sean looking so stressed out rounds before that. Nothing playing sick and playing sick. He was absolutely insane, just focusing on his job. Absolutely insane. We're waiting for the teams to just walk through the crowd right now. And you can tell in North America, for once, Cloud9 had the fans on their side. And they were loud. They were definitely passionate. And yet they come up so short in the end. Their map pool's got to be a bit of an issue. It's definitely something we'll talk to about Sean Gares with. Because if they can get a, a more depth in their map pool, having not issues on Mirage, not issues on Inferno, maybe they have a better veto against a team like Na'Vi. But, man, just absolutely insane. We're just waiting for Cloud9 to make it through. And then we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. But what a day. What a, what a turn of events, not only just for the teams themselves, but for the, for the tournament. Everything ran smoothly today. Organizers did an excellent job. And I think Montreal has been an absolute perfect place for a tournament like this. So once Cloud9 get down here, I'm sure they're just dealing with lots of emotions right now. I can just see Skadoodle trying to fight through the back of the crowd. But you got to give credit where credit is due. Obviously, there's still lots of issues with playing Europeans. Beat Envy, Envy's have problems right now. I think that's more than obvious online. The rumors, as you can hear the crowd, applauding Cloud9 as they come to the stage, and rightfully so, deservedly so. And we'll get them to just come right onto the stage and uh, make their way right up. And we'll get Sean right over here beside me. Nothing. I'm sure he doesn't have the energy to talk anymore after all that. Um, two weekends in a row, you guys play lights out. You get through to the finals. You guys are making, look, massive strides. Unbelievable strides as a team from where you were even two months ago. Come up a little bit short. Inferno is still a bit of an issue. Is the map pool something that has to be addressed? I'm going to go to Sean. I, apologize. I know you're super. You're like sweating right now. You're so sick. But you played sick too. So, Sean, I mean, that's, I mean it's got to be heartbreaking a little bit. Yeah, I mean... Uh, our Inferno problems kind of continue. We were always able to get like entry frags. We got double and triple killed every round, I felt like, T-side. Uh, we put that behind us pretty well, to be honest. Came back and took Dust2, even though we lost an eco round and some weird situations like a two on four and stuff like that. Uh, last map was overpass. I felt like we were in control pretty much the entire time, up until the last couple rounds. Uh, God, I don't know, man. That last round was brutal. And obviously, it doesn't come down to one round, though. I mean, we lost the eco round early in the half, and uh, all kind of stuff happened that probably shouldn't have, which sucks. 
Yeah, and I mean, that last round, definitely, like you say, it was like in your favor, it looked promising on A, and then Flamey pulls out a double when you walk in, falls apart like instantly. But again, the map pool itself, obviously you want the guys wanted to get rid of Mirage because it's Navi's home turf against pretty much every team, but that leaves Inferno, which you guys always say is kind of comfortable, but yet the results aren't there. Is the map pool a problem for you guys? Is that something you guys are going to have to address now to go back and grind out maps that you try and avoid to play against the European teams? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like pick your poison, right? Like the teams that were playing, their best maps generally Mirage, and then their second best map is like Inferno. Um, we're not very good on Mirage, so we have to play Inferno. Obviously, with the the, the ban ban pick pick system. So I mean, if they're gonna pick Inferno, we have to play Inferno, or we'd play Mirage, and maybe we could like play with that a little bit in the future. But this event, we went into it determined to play Inferno if it came down to it, and that's what we did. Well, obviously a sense of dejection in the voice, and, and I can understand that entirely, but over the last two weeks, you guys have made ex North America extremely proud after all the struggles they've had. No question, I'm sure the fans here would agree with that, and deservedly so. You guys have turned your team around so much, and it deserves credit. I know, that, <laughs> the Freakazoid's saying that close. Two weekends in a row, it's going to come eventually. But we'll leave it at that. I think we've, we've said it all. And uh, to present the check for $15,000 from OP Skins, Tucker, the CIO of OP Skins, will bring it on stage. Congratulations, guys. Enjoy. Just push out a little bit, guys, just to allow the photographer some better lighting. Put your hands together again. North America's pride turning everything around after how it's been lately. Cloud9 finishing second. A week ago, we wouldn't have expected them at ESCA to even make the finals when they come into this event as a, as a favorite. And now it's not done for them here. They go to Valencia next weekend for Face It, the major coming up. Lots of promise in that team right now. And not only that, actually putting up numbers against more teams than just Envious, Fnatic, Navi. European has to definitely take them seriously at this point. But the champions are beside us. The team who didn't even think that they were going to have their full roster coming into this showed up two hours before their first match, and they are the world champions, Navi. <laughs> Guardian, throughout the weekend, we talked quite a few times before the games. You've done a lot of the interviews. Before this game, you said 2-0, it ended up, or I think you actually did say 2-1. You did say Dust was going to go, yeah, you're right, you did say 2-1. Either way, overpass game, extremely close. And after how convincing your win was, was on Inferno, was it a little bit surprising that it was that hard to close out the series? Uh, yeah, it was quite surprising that we were down to 5-0. Uh, so it was quite hard to play. Then we won one round, and our economy was always down. So yeah, they, they, played, they played very well, and we just made so many mistakes on the city side. So yeah, they played very well. And, and during that time out, toward the end, you guys actually won an eco after that, but Zeus was like adamant. He was animated, he was livid. Like I think Semler used the line, these aren't suggestions, these are commands. What did you guys talk about during that time? Uh, we just needed to find out how to play because we made really l a lot of mistakes and we didn't know how to play against them. They were either going long on B or long on A, so yeah, we just found out how to play. We took some rounds on CT side and then they could beat us on uh, CT side, but they lost, uh, I think, they, they were 5v2, then we won the round. So yeah, they, they, there were some key rounds that we won and they shouldn't lose it. All right, well, we don't need to discuss too much more. Again, players coming in late, you all get here, you all play so well and deserve, I mean, you guys have won EPL now this year, you've won your home event at Star Ladder, you now win this event. Right now, you guys are looking to climb up the top 10, inevitably toward the top three, in my opinion. I would say even maybe potentially beyond that as the season goes on. So to protect, 
present the check for first place. The champions of ESWC Montreal. $30,000 is from John, the co-founder of OP Skins. Congratulations, guys. Of course, the check wasn't the only thing Navi played for this weekend. They also win the trophy, the championship cup for ESWC, presented by Armin of Montreal de Jour, the presenter of the event, the team people who made all of this possible. Congratulations again, guys. All right, well, Navi, what a year it's been. Everyone right now at the top of the Counter-Strike scene is beating each other. It's extremely exciting. That, I mean, the growth of the game, the growth of esports, and the growth going into the next year looks so promising. Again, congratulations to the Navi as they leave the stage. But I got to say, on a personal note, it's extremely, extremely prideful to be at an, a home event for me, to not have to go to Europe, Europe to see the best teams in the world play, to be here in my home country in Canada. It was a beautiful event. There was some issues, of course, inevitably, but today ran so smoothly, and the Counter-Strike today, I think, lived up to the name of World Championship status. It was unbelievable. Thanks so much to everyone who joined us. Thanks to OP Skins, to all of our sponsors behind me, Twitch, Rocat, putting on this event. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.